It is the final day of competition here at Bayfront Park in Miami, Florida, and we are just three events away from crowning champions in the elite team divisions at Tier Wadapalooza. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Brian Friend. Lauren Khalil is out there at Tina Hills as we are set for events number four. We've made the turn into the back half of the competition. Couldn't be simpler, Brian, not a barbell in sight. No, three events today, three different competitions, floors starting on Tina Hills. Eight minute time cap, but this is a relay style. This is gonna be fast. No athletes can be working for more than two and a half minutes. It's a full send. 100 pounds on the sandbag for the women. The only piece of equipment out there, Brian. What are the keys here in this very fast event? Yeah, absolutely no time to lose. When it's your turn to go, you have to go pedal to the metal. Recovery shouldn't be an issue. So look for maximum speed and high premium on execution. Squat for your life, I think that's gonna be the area where there's the biggest opportunity to make or break in terms of time. First of three heats here for the elite women's teams. Nine teams will be out on the floor. In lane number five, out of Brazil, Team Trade, a kind of a unique structure. All of their athletes, masters competitors. Yeah, all 38 or older, but none, no shortage of experience. Tata Reibon was at the games this past year, took 32nd with uh, Templa SA. Anita Pravati has uh, been to the CrossFit Games. She placed fourth in the Masters division a couple years ago. And Vivian has a couple regionals experiences from 17 and 18. And right next to them, in lane number six, the Trailer Park Girls. Be keeping an eye on them here in heat number one. We are underway. Each athlete will have to complete two laps with that 100 pound sandbag. Yeah, this is a relay style. So 120 feet for everyone past the bag. I don't even think they're gonna drop it. They'll just hand it off and the next one will be off and running. Once all three athletes are done, that is when they will move into the cleans and the squats. Each athlete will do nine, then each athlete does seven, then they close out with a set of five, and then back to this portion, the buyout, Take a look at the Trailer Park Girls, the trio of Kendra Dutton, Lindsey Martin, and Amy Hosking. Yeah, Amy had a 40th place finish at the North America West Semis. Lindsey was at the Atlas Games two years ago, and Katie has competed on teams dating back to the regional days. Sweet, sticky, thick, and pretty. Middle of your screen in lane eight. That's Ju Julia Glotz Crawford, who is now on to the opening set of nine sandbag cleans. Now they can't go touch and go here. Yeah, and that's why I think the squats are gonna be the critical component. You see how fast everyone's picking these cleans up off the ground, but there's no opportunity to touch and go them if you can, and therefore the athletes that can have that fast cycle rate of squats, think back to hat trick at the games when we saw that rebounding ability of Ellie Turner and Guimaeros propel them to a win in a fast paced interval style workout. That's what I think will make the difference here. And that, that is rebounding out of the bottom. That's super fast. And if you have three athletes that can do that, I think that's going to be a ticket to success. The Dixieland Delight in lane number four right now have taken the lead in the heat. They're left to center your screen, all the white tops now right in the middle. Becca Dennison, Mary Helen Saunders, and Sydney Smith, the three members of that squad. Yeah. First of three heats here. They were second in the online qualifier. Most of those qualifier workouts featured individual components being added together for a team score, so this should suit them pretty well in that regard. They're one of the higher ranking teams in this heat coming in, and they'll be looking to climb the ranks as we move towards that final tonight. Down in lane nine, that's the Leap and Lemurs. Taylor Koss and Sammy Scorzelli and Marissa Gonzalo. And it's Gonzalo on the bag right now. Yeah, Leap and Lemurs had their best performance on Worms. Can't swim yesterday with 13th place. It's always good to be in the water. And uh, we're just going to need to see some of that individual talent shine through today. Here comes Taylor Koss. You do not need to hold a specific order here. Something to keep in mind if, in case we see any teams that decide to send the same athlete out back to back to complete these sets. 
Yeah, I would think that most of them will probably maintain the same order throughout, but if you wanted to, you could have an athlete do back-to-back -back intervals. Now, if that's the case, you still have to run back and do a little tag before you go and complete the next set. So as I'll expect we'll see changes, but... Dixieland Delight, they are your leaders right now. Okay, so maybe maybe we were I was misinformed about that because she just that's Sydney Smith I believe and she just moved the sandbag forward and continued on to that set and if that is something that's allowed then absolutely I would be doing that strategy. Lane number eight, sweet, sticky, thick, and pretty. They are sitting in second place right now. Julia Glotz Crawford making quick work of those sandbag squats. And she'll tag in Jenny Prasad. And see some different options in terms of the placement for those squats. Some going to the shoulders, some staying in the front rack. The front rack restricts the breathing a little bit more, but you can get it there quicker. Obviously, it's less uh, distance that you have to travel. This is Fire Barnes Club. Rosalie Belanger, Jessica Nadeau, and Fanny Girard. Halfway through this event already, only eight minutes. And yeah. most of the teams look like they're closing out that set of seven. Eight minute cap, as we mentioned, and you know, you guys had Chris Hinshaw in the booth yesterday just from conversations with him. If you got three minutes or less of work in an event, it's a pretty much a full send for these athletes. The fatigue doesn't really set in, so the main thing you're trying to do here is avoid getting any no reps, I think. Dixie Landelite continuing to lead here. That's Mary Helen Saunders on the bag, and she's not moving slow, but you see that there is that. It's not that rebound and uh, dramatic explosion out of the bottom that we saw from some of the other athletes. And you know, it's, it's, it's a short workout, so tenths of seconds, a few seconds here and there can make a difference. Dixieland Delight has now moved into their final set of five. Each athlete will complete five cleans, five squats. Then it's another carry, two total laps to close this thing out. Top two teams on the screen, Dixie Dan, Land Delight in lane four, and Sweet, Sticky, Thick and Pretty on the right in and second place. Sydney Smith with a very fast cycling of squat rates there, but a little bit of a, you can see the leg fatigue building up a little bit as she ran back to tag in her last teammate. It's like Becca Dennison now on her set of five on the left side. Prasad out for Sweet, Sticky, Thick and Pretty on the right. Dennison is through. And for a short workout, there's a, there's a little bit of separation between those top teams. And I think that as far as Dixieland Delight goes, it was in the transition from the 9 to 7 and Sydney doing those back to back that kind of opened up that lead for them. The Fire Barnes Club, lane one, middle of your screen. Rosalie Belanger keeping her team in the mix here. Lane four, Dixieland Delight. They should be getting to work on the carry now. And now to close it out for Dixieland Delight as they are the only team on their final carry relay. Two laps for each athlete. And then time will be called lane eight. Sweet, sticky, thick and pretty. They are now on the final sandbag carry. Yeah, and a little bit less speed than it was on the opening interval. Of course, they've already done those fast squats and cleans, so a little bit tired, but pretty much just got to send it here because there's still two heats to come. Sydney Smith for Dixie Land Delight on the left. Is the second athlete for her team. Sweet, sticky, thick and pretty in lane eight. They also have gotten their second athlete, I believe, onto the bag. And this should be the final lap for Dixie Land Delight. Right side of your screen. And they are in. 702 unofficially for Dixieland Delight to take heat number one. You know, within one minute of that cap, but I think several teams are going to be finishing here in the next few seconds. Sweet, sticky, thick, and pretty came across right around 710 in lane eight for second place. Firebars Club in lane one, they are now in. Left side of your screen. Unofficially 702, the top time here. And now 30 seconds left before we hit the time cap. Oh, dive to the finish line. Lane number six. It's the trailer park girls. 
Now in lane five, that's Team Traita right in the middle. We've seen these fast-paced sandbag workouts over the last couple years, and not unusual to see some of those uh, with the weight moving forward so fast over the line at times. And that'll do it. Doesn't look like Team Trade is going to get in inside that eight-minute time cap, but Dixieland Delight, they set the early mark to beat seven minutes, two seconds. And uh, yeah, the, uh, Team Trepta may not have got in, but they were very close, which basically means that the spread was within about a minute there from best to worst in that heat. So very tight, small margins for air. Take one more look at that first heat. And you mentioned it was really that transition on the sandbag that probably put Dixieland Delight out front by enough to win this thing. Yeah, it was only about seven or eight seconds over the second place team in the hit there. Heat there is Sydney Smith making quick work of the cleans and the squats, and I think it was her effort in that middle transition that opened up the door. We talked about that they had had great performances in the online qualifier on a lot of individual paced performances that added together for, to produce good results, and they were able to do it once again here Saturday, Sunday morning, excuse me, in Miami. Seven minutes, two seconds unofficially for Dixie Land Delight. Now with two heats remaining. In event number four, the Sandbag Send, the first of three final events that these teams will face on the last day of competition here at Tier Water Palooza. Heat two coming up next. Fourth and final day of competition continues here at Tier Wadapalooza as action is moved to the Tina Hill stage for the final time. Thanks so much for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Brian Friend. Lauren Khalil is out there at the Tina Hills stage. One heat is down here in Sandbag Sen. Buy-in and buy-out with a relay of a sandbag carry. Sandbag cleans and sandbag squats in the middle. This one's fast. Everyone on your team needs to contribute, and we saw the margin for error from top to bottom very small. Talk about keys to success here. Yeah, it, it, when it is a workout like this, there's no real time to lose. You got when it's your turn, you got to move fast. And I think that that cycle rate on the squats with the forced transition on the ground for the clean, cleans is going to be a big factor. Nine teams out here for the second of three heats. Time to beat 702 from Dixieland Delight. Lane five, team that comes in in 10th place overall. The mile high muscles they had a pretty solid day one. Yeah, 11th, 5th, and 12th on the three events we had yesterday. Elisa Schauer has a lot of games experience with CrossFit Omnia. Zoe Warren has been to the games on a team with Backcountry and actually was 22nd at the North America West semifinals last year. And Madison McElhaney three times at semifinals over the last three years. So very well accomplished athletes here. There is Mile High Muscles, 10th place overall, 200 total points. They're only 32 points back of Team Barine for a spot inside the top five. Yeah, it's really tight. There was a lot of kind of parity amongst the events yesterday, so plenty of opportunity for these teams to push into the top 10 today. There's Kyra Milligan, Jesse Smith, and Devin Kim for Plus Ultra, a team that really didn't have the day one that they were looking for. No, I think a lot of people were expecting a podium finish for them. It's still definitely within reach, as we talked about. There's a lot of points up for grabs today, but 19th on the run, 8th and 9th once we got back to Bayfront Park here, so they'll be looking to improve on that on day two. Madison McElhaney out first for Mile High Muscles. Two total laps with that 100-pound bag to buy in for each athlete. Then it's nine, seven, and five of the cleans and the squats. There's Kyra Milligan for Plus Ultra. And even those little seconds on transitions with a few teams having very clean ones and others not so much can add up when we saw how tight the margins are when things get towards the end of this workout. Fearless Mitzvitz down in lane four. 
are your leaders as you take a look at the mile high muscles. There's Plus Ultra, Devin Kim on the bag. Still close here for the top spot. Down in lane number one, far left side of your screen, the Conquer Cuties, Bryn Curlin, Sierra Cameron, and Aurora Volante. Yeah, another team. Your early leaders. Another team. Oh, nice outfits, too. Another team that had a, <laughs> a great online performance, accumulating their efforts of individual. They had a uh, pretty steady day yesterday, 17th, 20th, and 17th, so maybe looking for uh, one of those kind of top 10 finishes to help bump up a few spots today. So Bryn Curlin going through her squats. Fearless Misfits in lane four. They're hanging with the Cocker Cuties. Lane four just center left to screen right now. Paige Semenza, Jenna Michelotti, and McKenna Enslin. Yeah, actually, I, I was over at the run yesterday. I tried to catch up with Paige Semenza, and she was like, Brian, I just need some time. <laughs> <laughs> we did talk about Jenna being on that team, three-time teenage athlete at the games over the last three years. Fifth place all three years. She'll be aging up this year, so we'll see if she makes a run at the semifinals, but a great teenage career for her. Lifters girls in lane six, starting to push for the lead. Carolyn Muller-Korn, Aileen Wurz, and Julia Lajowska. Yeah, they had a, they were actually second place on that running event. Aileen Wurz was over in Madrid with me earlier in the season. She had a fourth place finish in an individual competition there on a 5K-ish run with some hills in it. So uh, obviously her time contributed greatly to their performance on that one. All the teams closing out their round of nine. Top three, the Conquer Cuties in lane one. Lifters girls, they sit in second place right now. Right now, and then in third, it's the Fearless Misfits in lane four. And now on the left side of your screen, the Conquer Cuties advancing to the round of seven. This was the area in the heat number one where we saw Dixieland Delight kind of make a move with Sydney Smith doing a back-to-back -back on the nine and seven. It seems like most of the teams here have chosen to make a switch, though. Eight of the nine teams are into their rounds of seven. Base Wellness now down in lane number nine. They have overtaken the Conquer Cuties for first place in the heat. That is Emma Gardner. On her set of seven, now moving into the squats. Katrina DiGiacomo behind her and Madeline Brooker, the other two members of that team. Yeah, fourth place in the online qualifier to get in here. Emma Gardner picking up some semi-final experience earlier in her career two years ago. Here comes DiGiacomo for base wellness on the right side. On the left, the Conquer Cuties. These are the two teams fighting for first place right now in this heat. The time to beat from the prior heat, 7.02 from Dixieland Delight, and we are now at the halfway point of this event. Conquer Cuties have now overtaken base wellness for first place. Two teams at opposite ends of the floor. Cuties in the far left in lane number one, base wellness in lane nine. Now Sierra Cameron on the bag for the Conquer Cuties. Tina Hill's the smallest of the three stages here at Bayfront Park, but still when it's the team that's the farthest away from you on the floor, it can be tough to gauge with all that action going on in between you in the same line of just where they're at relative to you, especially in this relay style format. Madeline Brooker on the right side just closed out her set of seven cleans on the left. The Conquer Cuties now moving into the round of five. And this is what we saw in the prior heat. That's, I believe that's Bryn Curlin on the bag for the Cuties on the left. Meanwhile, Mile High Muscles in lane five, they have now moved into second behind the Conquer Cuties. Still see pretty fast running as well between the transitions for the Conquer Cuties there in lane number one. We saw us in the uh, first heat, Dixie and Delight, legs getting a little heavy and the running a little slower, but they still look fresh with that carry still to come. That's a good thing. Torian Black, the only team that's not into the round of five. And the Conquer Cuties continue to work through their final round. Here comes 
Sierra Cameron in first place. Mile High Muscles sit in second, and the Lifters girls are now in third. As we approach the six minute mark, 7.02, that is the time to beat from Dixieland Delight in heat number one. And this is setting up for a pretty tight finish here, and we talked about on the buy in that those transitions when from one person carry to the next could end up coming into play. The Conquer Cuties are off. On their buyouts here, a Cameron two laps are down, and she will hand things off. It looks like to Bryn Curlin. Lane five, mile high muscles. Right side of your screen. There in second place. That means Aurora Valente will be the anchor leg for the Cuties. She was at the North America East semifinals last year, taking 50th place, so good candidate to close things out here. Valente on the left is your final athlete for the Conquer Cuties, and they're looking to track down that top time, and right now ahead of that pace. And the Conquer Cuties are going to do it. They are in 655, unofficially besting Dixieland Delight by seven seconds. And off screen in lane five, Madison McElhinney almost caught her. It was only a second or two. And so a couple times faster than the time from heat one, I believe. Fearless Misfits in lane four, they are in. Now Torian Black in lane three closing out that final carry. 40 seconds to go before we hit the cap. And every team is going to get in inside of that mark. Maybe not, Torian Black, I thought that was their last athlete. They have one to go. And yeah, we saw only one team hit the time cap in heat one. And with a 6.55 fastest time and an eight minute cap, that means that one minute is more or less the range of time for almost everyone. That is Amy Alessi who's trying to get her team in inside that eight minutes. And it's not gonna happen as they still had Bryony Chalice left to go on the bag. But the Conquer Cuties, seven seconds better unofficially than Dixieland Delight. New top time, six minutes, 55 seconds as they lock up the heat win. Yeah, this was tight from the start and really it stayed tight to the finish, but Conquer Cuties had very clean transitions, fast running between all the intervals and fairly fast cycle rates on the squats. And in the, in the end, it was enough to hold off several of teams that were very close to them. And I think running order, transitions, speed of squats, everything was executed well for the Conquer Cuties. They were able to hold off a couple of teams that pushed them for that top spot. Valente get them, gets them across the finish line. Six minutes, 55 seconds. They have the new top time with one heat remaining for the women. Heat number three, the final heat, coming up next. We are down to the final heat of event number four, the fourth of six events that the elite teams will face here at Tier Wadapalooza. Thanks for staying with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Brian Friend. We'll hear from Lauren Khalil in a second down there at Tina Hill's stage. The Sandbag Send is the challenge at hand. Yeah, and definitely appropriately named. This is a full send when it's your turn to go. Sandbag carry, sandbag clean, sandbag squats in a relay fashion. Everyone's got to contribute here. 
What are the keys to the event, Brian? Yeah, I mean, we've seen how tight the scores are. No time to lose at all. Every detail matters, the way you pass the sandbag, the space that you run back and forth, and then the cycle rate on the squats is definitely a place that if you can have that elasticity, that rebounding effect where you can gain a couple precious seconds. Nine teams again on the floor for this final heat of the elite women's teams. And one of the bigger surprises on day number one will be in lane number two. That's, oh, pardon me, they're going to be in lane six. That's the Lycan gang. They come in second place overall. Yeah, and they've, they have some experience. This is AB CrossFit's girls, uh, Maria and Laura, from the last two years. So we've seen them at semifinals. We've seen them at the games, but they haven't had this kind of excess at Wadapalooza. They were in the 32nd last year here, sitting second after day two. But with the experience they have, Diana was at semifinals at Copa Sur as an individual. I don't know, man. I think they're going to stay in the mix. The team to their right, left of your screen, that's RX Performance. They're your overall leaders here at Tier Palooza. 272 points, but they're only eight up on the Lycan gang. Yeah, a lot of experience on this team, and Camila Salmonson Hellman there in the front. Her son, her, her child is about two years old. She says, this is like vacation for me. I get to sleep. <laughs> We start with that sandbag carry, two total laps for each athlete. And Salmonson Hellman in lane five is out first for RX performance. They had a great day one, everything inside the top five, including a win in Worms Can't Swim there at Bayside. Heat one liability pick, the fans no shock they picked Ice Barrel, but the Heat one pick. People behind that app. Stronger than the 90s trend. Yeah, and I like that pick there. Kelly Baker, Kelsey Keel, Emmy Loomberg, all very powerful athletes, and I think that cleans no issue at all. And if they can squat fast, they're already up there right in the front. They could be a sneaky pick here for sure. Seven teams, now eight teams on to the round of nine. Kelsey Keel out first for her team. A 100 pound sandbag should not be much of a tr problem for her. No, she moves weight as well as anyone in the sport, but she's been working on her conditioning as well, and that certainly paid off for her and her team yesterday and with both the long run and the swim. Stronger than the 90s trend, right side of your screen. They are your leaders. Right next to them, Team Barine. Rodrigo Baller up, Astrid Tind, and Sil Zillo. Yeah, they had a really solid behind. day one as well. That's that team from Butcher's Lab in Denmark who are constantly putting good team athletes into high-level competition, specifically in Europe, but have been at the games, and it's great to see them here in Miami too. A team Scandinavian on your screen just a second ago. Fourth place overall for them, just four points back and stronger than the 90s trend for third. Now, Scandinavian on the right side of your screen, and on the left in the middle, that's stronger than a 90s trend. Let's bring in Lauren Khalil down there at Tina Hill. Something that we've noticed from the first two heats and you're seeing here specifically with the stronger than the 90s uh, team is that when they get done with those cleans, they bring the sandbag down to their chest to hold it in front for the squats, which we've seen is faster than the other athletes that are holding it on their back for the squats, using that weight to bring them down in a faster transition time. Thanks, Lauren, and just about every team going with that bear hug grip for those squats, although down there in lane one, as soon as I say that, the Kolesnikov team, they've got the thing on their backs. Stronger yeah. than the 90s trend, they continue to lead as Kelsey Keel moves into the round of seven. And Kolesnikov team was one of the fastest on the relay portion with the carry, but with that squatting cycle speed on the shoulder, as Lauren mentioned, they have fallen off the pace a little bit. Also in lane two, Team Ice Barrel. I think that's Bailey Braille who's on the squats. That was Sid, uh, pardon me, that was Brooke Wells who was on the squats with that on the back. Now here comes Bailey Rail into the round of seven. But your leaders are in lane number four. Kelsey Keel is now done, and she will tag in Emily Loomberg, who will start her set of seven. Stronger than the 90s on the left. They're your leaders. On the right, Scandinavian, they have moved into second place. Rebecca Vittison now with that bag on her back. Now here comes Matilda Garnas. 
Yeah, and you talked about uh, a strong team of individual athletes. Vitason making the games this year for the first time. Fifth place in the elite individual competition here. Matilda Garnis, two times game ath games athlete. And Annika Greer barely missed it out of a really competitive North American East semifinal this year. She's a huge pick for a lot of people to make it through to the games this season. Kelly Baker, left side of your screen for stronger than the 90s trend. She's on the final round of seven for her squad. We talk about an athlete who also had a great individual season, very emotional qualification out of the North America West semifinal and a ton of team experience, specifically here at Wadapalooza. Great shot of the transition there that Lauren was talking about. Final two squats for Baker in the round of seven. Now Kelsey Keel will kick off the round of five for her team. Stronger than a 90s trend as we are a little more than halfway through this eight minute time cap. Third place overall, 244 total points. There are 20 back of Lycan Gang for second. And Annika going with the sandbag on the shoulder, but it did not slow down her cycle rate of the squats. Those were just as fast as the women we've seen with it in the front rack. Now Vitason on the right side under the round of five. That's the second athlete for Scandinavian. And now Emily Lundberg. RX performance on the right side, Camilla Salmonson Hellman. They've moved into second place now behind, stronger than the 90s trend. Great pace from Emily Lundberg, left side of your screen. That's yeah, an Antonia Falkotolensky there working for RX Performance. I spoke with them this morning and they said that the team experience that she's had with that CrossFit Nordic team over the years uh, has really kind of been a, a thing that they've leaned into here, bringing in Salmons and Hellman and Maria Longforce who are more known for their individual competitions. Top three teams on your screen right now from left to right, first, second, and third. It's stronger than the 90s trend. Kelly Baker in the red pants on her final round of five and now she gets right to the carry. RX performance in lane five, they're in second place, and then far right, Annika Greer. Yeah, another smooth transition there for the 90s trend, and we've seen it in all three heats of the women. The details matter on a workout like this. Well, interesting that Kelly Baker took the bag right back to Kelsey Keel for her carry. We've seen other teams just go ahead and keep the same athlete out there. So Keel is done. As stronger than the 90s trend now has two athletes down. Time to beat 655 from the Conquer Cuties. That is about to go down. There's Kelly Baker. One more lap for her. And stronger than the 90s trend looking to pick up their first event win here at Tijuana Palooza. And they will do it 100 points to stronger than a 90s trend. As they look to track down Lycan Gang in lane six and they're gonna get some help from rx performance as they are done scandinavian is in as well the lycan gang still working they're in the black shirts they're in lane number six team ice barrel Paige powers running the anchor leg she is done lycan gang still working now times from the prior heats are starting to factor in here Frog Grips in lane number nine, they're done. And in lane eight, that's NGH. Yeah, NGH had an amazing start to the competition yesterday in events number one and two. Well, it's a seventh place finish unofficially in this heat for Lycan Gang. Again, they came in in second place overall. They're only 20 up on Stronger Than a 90s trend. So it's likely that Stronger Than a 90s trend could find themselves one spot closer to the overall lead. I think even Team Scandinavian down there in fourth is going to close the gap on Lycan Gang a little bit there. But RX performance second in the heat, I think second overall. And they might be have a, a nice lead at the top actually heading into the middle workout of three today on the final day of competition. Kolesnikov team is trying to get in inside that eight minute time cap. That's Eisen Zarazova. Well, this is what we saw from them at the onset, that they were really fast on the relay, but they lost a lot of time on the squats. And Trubitskaya is not going to be able to close it out for her team, but stronger than a 90s trend. Picking up the event win, their first of Tier Wadapalooza to go along with a pair of sevens and a third last night in Uno Dos Tres. Yeah, the Heat 1 app guys must know what they're talking about. The 90s trend got out to the lead, and they look great on that workout.
So one more look at the effort from stronger than a 90s trend. And as we have seen in prior heats, a lot of teams pushed them for that first place, but they were not able to overtake them. Yeah, we saw Emily Lundberg there. Here's Kelly Baker, just very precise on every aspect of this, whether it was the cleans, the transitions to the carry, as we get to see there, fast out of the bottom on every one of their squats for all three athletes. Everything they did in this contributed to the win and in a workout that requires no room for air with such a small time window. They were better than everyone and clearly earned this win. Kelly Baker, Kelsey Keel, making really quick work of that bag and they were the first team onto that final carry and nobody was gonna catch them as Kelly Baker gets across the finish line, brings home the event win for stronger than a 90s trend. And they look to creep up the leaderboard and put some pressure on RX Performance. RX Performance coming in to this event with the overall lead with 272 points, but they're gonna have a finish inside the top five in this event. Well, after 12 years of celebrating fitness, the Tier Palooza is heading to SoCal. Huntington Beach will be the setting for our second flagship event this September, Miami and SoCal. Tier Palooza is now bi-coastal. You can scan the QR code to learn more. Standing room only out there at, at Tina Hills. And usually, we don't see this kind of event for the teams here at Tier Wada Blues. It's usually reserved for kind of the, the lifting stuff. It was a nice treat for the fans to see this kind of action out here at this venue. Yeah, certainly no short shortage of drama for the athletes on the, on the floor and the, of course the fans that have packed the hills there. And while it was a great workout for 90s trend, RX performance, another top five finish. They're looking awesome. And those fans got to see a great effort from stronger than the 90s trend. They win the event and they are with Lauren Khalil. And this team, you guys continue to do well as the weekend progresses. A seventh, seventh, third, now first. How does it feel to be improving as the weekend progresses? Yeah, this environment's just awesome. Obviously, everyone knows, but I'm just getting to be alongside my best friend. And we kind of all went into the weekend of just like, let's just go have fun. And it's just been a great experience so far, yeah. Several appearances, at least for you two ladies, I think this is the sixth or seventh year you've been at Wadapalooza. When looking at the other teams that you're out here competing against, you say you're here to have fun, but what is the overall goal and mission? I mean, I am with two of like the best in the sport, so I feel like it's just really fun to be able to come out here and we are actually having fun and enjoying each other, but to be able to be doing well, it kind of is a testament to how much work we've put in. Um, in the past seasons and you know leading up to now two more workouts left for the day what is the game plan just have fun go <laughs> with it yeah. Do yeah and have fun together and you know just try to hang on to continue to improve so now that we've hit a one hopefully we can just stay up there fun is the name of the game for these ladies and it certainly is paying off <laughs> Stronger than a 90s trend, first win of the competition and 100 points added to their total as the elite women's teams are done with Sandbag Send. More action to come here from Tina Hill's stage. The men coming up next. Day number four, the final day of competition continues here at Tier Palooza. We have moved action to Tina Hills as the elite men's teams take over. I'm Sean Woodland with Brian Friend. Lauren Khalil is out there at Tina Hills. This one is fast. It is the sandbag send. Yeah, it starts and end with the relay on the carries. In the middle, you have a 
relay of sandbag squats and sandbag cleans. We saw how tight the margins were for the women. I expect more of the same here for the men. You've watched three heats of the women. Anything change about your keys? I think if anything, it's amplified them. No time to lose, and that applies to every aspect of it, from the transitions to the pace of running and the cycle speed on the squats, especially with the 150 bag that is historically more heavy for the men than the women. The guys that can get out of the hole fast, and if they can do it across all three teammates, should do really well. Ten teams in the first of three heats for the men. True coach, train call. They'll be at a lane number four. Yeah, they came in as the top team from the online qualifiers, which means that they had shown great individual capacity in the style of workouts that Wadapalooza put out this year for the qualifications. This workout should kind of play to that skill set, and they've been improving every workout, just like we saw from 90s trend. They were uh, ninth place last night, and we'll be looking to build on that momentum today. We had the wrong team on screen. Their true coach, Train Cult, is going to be in lane number four. And there they are, the trio of Miko Liliorg, Kevin Jures, and Bartek Lipka. Liliorg and Kevin Jures, they're probably the two best guys from Estonia currently. Jures did make the semifinal last year. Liliorg actually pretty much missed it because of those uh, crossover single owners that tripped them up in the quarters. Liliorg had that great swim yesterday. Yeah, Worms can't swim. Phenomenal. He can clearly swim. <laughs> he absolutely can, yeah. 150 pound bag, two laps for each man to buy in here. And then same rep scheme that we saw with the women, nine, seven, and five on the cleans and the squats. Jack Rosema in lane number six, black top. Mayhem Outlaws. Yeah, I'm actually curious to see who's out there on the floor for them, they, uh, that's Alexander Caron. Now, <laughs> Alexander Caron did not do all of the workouts yesterday for this team, but he is participating in the ones that he can do. So they're not taking points at this point, they're just out there competing and kind of uh, cycling in as they need to. When they when he couldn't do the workout, Jake Lockhart, the coach for CrossFit Mayhem, filled in for them on that swimming workout. He's obviously got, uh, if you haven't followed him online, he's got an Ironman under his belt recently, so. Not a bad guy to have for <laughs> swimming no, then. No, he's exceptionally fit. True coach Train Colt, one of the first teams on to the round of nine cleans. He leads Train Colt in lane five, left side. Next to them, the Mayhem Outlaws in lane six. Lane seven is Soul AB squad. In lane eight, your leaders right now. Team Overtake. The three, the three athletes Jeremy Dumont, Gauthier La Crew, and Timothy Brief. Yeah, you know, we talk about the international flair of competition here, making the way over from Europe to compete. Several European teams here, several Australian teams, Latin America represented well. It's one of the great things about Tier Wadapalooza. True coach Train Cold, lane four, making a bit of a move now to put some pressure on Team Overtake down in lane eight. Yeah, that is Kevin Jours there. He's a very strong athlete, powerful athlete, and with that 150 sandbag on the squats, you see he's moving it pretty easily, contributing very well on his portion of the relay here. Now, true coach Train Cult in first place. Soul AB squad has moved into second, and Team Overtake now in third place as these teams are putting the finishing touches on their rounds of nine. Artek Lippe getting a no rep on his first sandbag clean there, and with the margins being so small, that's a few precious seconds lost for him. He's a, a veteran of this sport though, so he immediately clarified it with his judge. He's been competing in CrossFit since 2012 and has helped pave the way for successful male athletes out of Poland like Bronisław Lenkovic and Mikael Wazalowski in recent years. True coach Trinkled on the left. On the right side in the all gray is the sole AB squad. And they've pulled even with true coach Trinkle right now. Yeah, really fast cycle right there. Now and, they've taken the lead. And one of their, the last athlete in that first interval choosing to do the squats with the sandbag on the shoulder. It hasn't been fast for everyone, but as we saw with Annika Greer, if you have the capacity to do it, it is an option. That's Nate Scola opening up the round of seven for Seoul AB squad. 22nd place overall with 93 total points.
Mayhem Outlaws next to them in lane six on the left side of your screen. Pushing for the lead and team overtake in lane eight. Right behind them as well. Top two teams, Soul AB squad on the right side. True coach Trinkle on the left. Well, that Soul AB squad has the male members from that CrossFit AB team that we've seen had success over the last two years. So all four members of their team from semifinals split into separate divisions here, but representing very well once again. We are halfway through this event, eight minutes total as Bartek Liepke takes over as Kevin Jurz was able to put himself and his team in the lead here in this round of seven. And we're seeing a little bit of trading of the lead and it, more or less it's like Jurs can kind of pull ahead and then the last athlete, I can't tell who it is, for the, that AB team seems to be faster than Lipka and so this might one might come down to that relay at the end. Lipka onto his seven squads as Liliorg behind him gets the belt ready. Nate Scola, the sole AB squad. He's going to have about a one rep lead on Liliorg getting to that final round. Lane number five has also kind of snuck up there, so this one's getting super tight between a few teams. Left side is Liliorg, who's in his round of five, along with Scola on the right side of your screen. And the Mayhem Outlaws are also in their round of five. So it is tight at the front here, less than three minutes to go. Soul now has the lead right side of your screen as it's Luis Echeguerre. This is Kevin Jours in, uh, in lane number four. He's the one that's been making the moves for his team. And so I'd expect him to have a little bit of a lead, but I think it's Mario who's going last for Soul AB and he's usually been able to close that distance. Bartek Liebke is the last man out. Here comes Santaella. Oh, and a little mistake there in lane number five with the athlete leaving early. I think that's Pablo Cazales, who's the anchor lead for the team in lane number five. A couple seconds could matter there. Santayela on the right side into the squats. Lipka into the squats as well. This one's probably going to be a race on the carry between lanes four and lane seven. And Santayela is going to keep that thing. So Man. now he starts his two laps. He has been so fast on his intervals with the cleans and the squats. Extremely impressive. Liebka as well is going to go out first. And Liebka is about a lap behind Sol AB. And lane number five has actually overtaken Lipka as well as they transition to their second athlete on the carries. So Lipka giving up a little bit of ground there. Final athlete now, it's Nate Scola for Seoul in lane seven as they look to bring home the heat win. And Scola is going to get across the finish line first. Seoul AB setting the time to beat 6.56 unofficially. Pablo Gonzalez with another mistake there on the transition, allowing Kevin Jures to pass him. 7.06 unofficially for true coach Train Colt. The Leeds train cult talking something over with their judge, but they are in. And the Mayhem Outlaws in lane six, they're also done. Team Overtake, they finished up. This is 10 Skills Pro 1 in lane two, closing out their round of five. DSM Performance TCC in the Midwest Cowboys lanes one and three flanking them. Matt Pratt ditches the hat. And he's got a hustle to make it. Doesn't look like he's going to get there. Soul AB, though, a great push at the end. They go sub seven, unofficially 656 to set the early time to beat. Yeah, and Mario Santaella, what an incredible performance by him every time he got out there on the sandbag. One of the tightest heats that we have seen so far. 
That's just heat one of three, Sean. That battle for first place wasn't decided until the final stages of that round of five. No, it was really an exchanging of blows with uh, Kevin Jours extending the lead for his team and then Mario Santayala reeling them in. But Santayala with the last five reps and then the, the transition to the run ended up creating a gap that was insurmountable. Nate Scola, he's got some team experience as well with Seoul Miami at semifinals in North America last year. He's clearly fitting in very well with the boys from AB CrossFit as uh, they set their early time to beat here in pretty impressive fashion. And Santayala was the last man out in that round of, round of five and went right into the carry. And that's where he really separated himself from Bartet Litka for true coach Trankolt. And Seoul AB with a time of 6.56. They bring home the Heat win. Now with two Heats remaining. And we remember the energy that AB CrossFit brought to the semifinals last year. That was right. one of the, the highlights of that, uh, that stage of competition. A lot of fun there at the uh, North American East semifinal in Orlando, just up the road from here. I would imagine some of those same fans are in the crowd, and that's who Mario is pumping his fist at in celebration there of the Heat win. One heat down, two remain as action continues here at 2024 Tier Wadapalooza. One heat down, two remain here for the elite men's teams in events number four, the fourth of six total events that they will face here at 2024 Tier Wada Palooza. We're glad you're with us, everyone. I'm Sean Woodland with Brian Friend and Lauren Khalil is out there at Tina Hills stage. Event four, it is the sandbag send, and you better send it if you want a chance to win it. Absolutely, relay style event, buy in with the carry, cash out with the carry, sandbag cleans and sandbag squats in the middle. 6.56 from Sol AB unofficially is your time to beat. Keys to Sandbag Sand. No time to lose. The more heats that wear on, the more critical it's becoming apparent. The transitions, the pace of the squats, every single detail matters and no rep can go a long way. If you do have a fast squatting cycle speed, it's definitely also an advantage as we saw Lejeurs and Santaella in the last heat. Nine teams will be on the floor here in the second of three heats in lane number five. Omnia, they come in in 11th place overall with 171 total points, only 17 points back of CrossFit Mayhem the Empire for a spot inside the top 10. Yeah, they've been pretty consistent, 10th, 10th, and 16th yesterday. Jacob Schmidt is the veteran of CrossFit Omnia on this team. He's joined by Hayden Weddle, who was on CrossFit Believe that qualified to the games last year, and Jason Zobot, who is 40th place in the North American West semifinals and has competed at semifinals on a team as well. So a lot of experience for Omnia. Complex Wadex, they're in lane six. They had a really impressive performance yesterday in Worms Can't Swim as we are underway with that initial sandbag carry at 150 pounds. Yeah, ex extremely good swimmers, obviously, but also some team experience. Christian and Ricardo were at the North American West semifinals on CrossFit Complex where they took 13th place. So maybe not the most well-known guys, but certainly have a fighting chance here to get into the top 10. Team Gorilla. 9-1-1, they are your early leaders in lane seven, Alex and Jeremy Vigno along with Jason Uda. And those are some big, powerful boys. Sandbags should feel light in their arms, and as long as they can squat fast, they could be a sneaky pick here in this heat. Each athlete needs to complete two total laps. There is Alex Vigno, and now every team is on to their Opening round of nine cleans and squats, and Vigneault's going to go right to work. Gorilla 9-1-1 came in as the second qualifying team through the qualifiers. We saw the training cult, training cult team that was first in the qualifiers have a good performance in the previous heat, so potentially similar here for Vigneault and Vigneault. <laughs> Top three teams on the screen right now. As team Gorilla 9-1-1, they are your leaders. They're in the middle. Alex Vigno with that bag on his back. On the left side, Complex Wadex, they sit in third place right now as 
Team Evolve in lane at number eight. Second in from right. They sit in third. Each team on their second man now in this round of nine cleans and squats on that 150 pound bag. Again, the time to beat 656 from Soul AB squad out of heat number one. That's Max Lift Australia. 15th place overall coming into this event with 130 total points. Riley Martin on the bag for them. All three they have of those. now moved into third place, pardon me, Brian. Yeah, all three of those guys with semifinal experience in Oceania and pretty good performances there too. So curious to see them in the team format, but no surprise that as individuals they were able to qualify for this. Max Lift has now moved into second behind the team on your screen right now. Team Gorilla 911. Max Lift Australia making quick work of that bag. That's James Thomas. Yeah, phenomenal transitions there. Drops it, gets the hands under it right away, back up to the shoulder, smooth transition into the squat, as Lauren was talking about earlier. So very, very good in every aspect there with the sandbag cleans and squats. Now Alex Vino is back out on the right side for Team Gorilla 911. He's into the round of seven. Now Omnia, meanwhile, in lane number five, they're starting to creep up. They're in third place behind Max Lift Australia. Yeah, and just because you're in the lead here doesn't mean it's a guarantee that you're going to keep it. We saw that in the previous heat, so no one's in the clear yet. Vino's done. They maintain their lead as Jason Uda is out. Left side of your screen, Jacob Schmidt now in the middle for Omnia. Now Jacob Schmidt has been competing with Cooper Weiss as his male counterpart for years now. And Cooper's going to take a break this year, but he's got some great replacements, as we mentioned. Halen Weddle also, Hayden Weddle, excuse me, also qualifying to the games this past year on the team. Look up Jeremy Vino now. Final set of seven for Team Gorilla 911. Axe Lift Australia. James Thomas is on the bag on the left side in that number 55 jersey. 150 pound sandbags are heavy, actually. But these guys make them look so light, it's crazy. Team Gorilla 9-1-1, they've had the lead throughout this heat. Here comes Alex Vino to start the set of five. Man, and they do look really good. We saw that there were specific teammates in, first, in the first heat that were able to do good things for their team. All three of these guys moving the sandbag with incredible ease. And I don't know if anyone's going to be able to catch them here. Omnia is currently in second place, not far behind Team Gorilla 911. About two reps ahead is Team Gorilla 911 of Omnia in lane five. And here comes Jacob Schmidt again in that green shirt. Team Gorilla 911, they're second in from the right side of your screen. Jason Uda on the bag for them in this set of five, trying to hold off Omnia. Omnia now on the left. And here comes Jeremy Vino. We saw a few mistakes from teams in transitions and even in the relay. Max Lift Australia not necessarily out of this either. Just, you know, it's been a great performance so far for Gorilla 911. Clean execution on that last relay with the carries is all that they need to lock this one in. It's pretty even now between Team Gorilla 911 and Omnia. Hayden Weddle. Now Hayden Weddle on the left side has now overtaken Team Gorilla 911 as Jeremy Vino has that bag held closely to his stomach. And now Omnia making the transition as Jason Zobot is onto the bag. Yeah, we saw the same thing with Lipka. He kind of lost some steam going straight from the round of five into the carries that just seemed to happen with Vino as it slipped off his shoulder there. And Weddle looked great. Jacob Schmidt with one lap remaining. 
Uda on the right for Team Gorilla 911. Doesn't look like he's going to catch him. And now Omnia has a new time to beat. 6.30 unofficially taking heat number two and out dueling Team Gorilla 911 late in that heat. Max Lift is going to hang on to the third spot in the heat as they just get across. Lane number three. But yeah, what a great close there by Weddle particularly. And just like Santayella in the first heat, they weren't the leaders for a long time, but that transition from the fives into the carry made all the difference for them. More teams starting to finish up. Nate Ackerman there on screen. He's a former CrossFit Games teenage champion, 20 years old now, and trying to make his way through the ranks of the elite individuals. The Fox Ferret Manatee men. Interesting uh, outfit choices from them this weekend. They are hard to miss walking around here. <laughs> There's Alex Smith for Krypton. Now Complex Wadex. Mauro Acevedo Calvete trying to close things out for his team. He's in. Great race between Omnia and Team Gorilla 9-1-1 as Omnia now has the new time to beat right around 6 minutes 30 seconds and they were hanging in second place for the majority of that heat until that final set of five. Yeah, I mean, Vigneault and the boys looked amazing almost all the way through. I almost feel like I cursed them there. I said that last carry, it needs to be precise and all, that's all they needed. We'll see here from the start, really fast transitions on the sandbag for pretty much everyone. These guys make this sandbag look so good. There's Zobot here for Omnia, working through some of his sandbag cleans. Smooth transitions into the squats. Jacob Schmidt choosing to do it on the shoulder, and you see the experience there, just watching the counting reps of the judge in such a short time domain of a workout, making sure that you get every rep in the books matters a lot. That is Hayden Weddle, and he was the difference maker in this heat. Going from the five straight into the carries is where he made the pass on Jeremy Vigneault. Zobat and Schmidt hung on late, and they walk away with the heat win. Unofficially, six minutes, 38 seconds for Omnia. God, that is moving fast with 150 pounds on your shoulder. And Jacob Schmidt closes things out, able to hang on to the lead that Hayden Weddle gave him. And Omnia now has the top time right around 6 minutes 30 seconds. So 6 minutes 30 seconds with one heat remaining here at Tina Hills. One heat remains for the elite men's teams here in event number four at Tijuana Thanks for being with us, everybody. On this final day of competition from beautiful Miami, Florida, I'm Sean Woodland alongside Brian Friend. Lauren Khalil is down there on the stage at Tina Hills. It's the sandbag send, and it is fast. I've seen it five times already, and I think this is going to be the fastest heat yet. Usually with the 150-pound sandbag, the men are slower than the women, but so far they've been faster. This has been incredibly impressive, and these guys in this heat are savages. Top teams in the overall standings are out on the floor. What are the keys to success here? No time to lose. Every person has to execute quickly and precisely, and if you can squat fast, you're going to find yourself towards the front. Here are your overall standings with three events remaining coming into the day. Only 16 points separate the top three teams, with Team Gowad currently occupying the top spot 
on the overall leaderboard. Team tier there on the outside looking in as far as a podium spot is concerned with 248 points, and it's the strapping young lads, 20 points back of them in fifth. Ten teams will be on the floor here. We just mentioned a team tier looking to get themselves into a podium spot. They will be in lane number seven. Yeah, consistency pays off in the sport of CrossFit. They've been second, sixth, and eighth. But as you mentioned, those top three teams, none of them have had a placement worse than fifth. So you don't even just need to be consistent in this field. You need to be consistently great. And we are underway. The team with the overall lead, Team Goa, the trio of Justin Medeiros, Willie George, and Jay Crouch. They will be right in the middle of the floor in lane number five. And Jay Crouch is going to open things up. The fan pick on the Heat 1 app, Team Tier. The Heat 1 crew, they're taking the Ombre Hombres. Well, you talk about guys that can potentially squat really fast. You got Noah Olson, Chandler Smith, and Tola Morikinho. I can understand that pick. There's Dallin Pepper for Team Tier. Ricky Gerard opened things up for them. Each athlete has to complete two laps with that 150 pound bag. Time to beat Omnia from heat number two. Six minutes, 30 seconds. And there is Tola Morakino for the Ombre Hombres. Basically a one rep lead on the rest of the field there to start. And yeah, Tola Morakino, I think he could move this just as fast with a 200 pound sandbag. And he's a guy that many people you know for his strength and the amount of weight that he can throw over his head. But we were talking about this last night. He is really a more complete athlete than he's ever been. He looks phenomenal. He ran well yesterday. He was holding his own out there with Dallin Pepper, who's a pretty good runner in his own regard. Swam great. I am very impressed with the way that Tola Morakino has rounded out his games over the last two years. Morakino, Crouch, and Krennikov on your screen right now. Krennikov for Team Pixel. Second place overall, Krennikov's team. 284 points, only four back of Team Gowad for first. Yeah, we just mentioned the high caliber of athletes in this field. We got Dubai champions, Rogue champions, Games champions, and Wadapalooza champions. The best of the best have shown up to compete on the team side of things for the elite men. The Ombre Hombres are your leaders, but not by much. Team Gowad sits wow. in second. Look how fast Chandler's squatting that sandbag, though. That's going to be tough to keep up with. Now Noah Olson is on the floor as the Ombre Hombres are coming off that win last night in Uno Dos Tres. Justin Medeiros is one of those athletes that does have that elastic ability to bounce out of the bottom of the squad. This is going to be fun to watch him on this first set of nine. He'll be one or two reps behind Noah, but he's an athlete that could possibly make up a rep or two here. The Ombre Hombres lead this heat, team tier. Dallin Pepper on the bag right now. They sit in second, and Team Gowad right now is in third. You see the different strategies, both Travis Mayer and Dallin Pepper with the sandbag. In the front rack, we saw Noah Olson and uh, Justin Medeiros throwing it up on the shoulder. Here goes Jason Hopper. He'll make the transition into the round of seven. Rocchino and Crouch. Neck and neck right now. Rakinio, a couple of reps ahead after getting to the squats before Jay Crouch, who's on the right side of your screen. Easy day for Tola Marakino there. And great focus, too, looking at the judge, making sure that every rep counts. We've seen a couple no reps in previous heats. Those can be costly. Tola making sure that that doesn't happen to him. The Ombre Hombres, Team Gowad and Team Tier, your top three right now. Lanes four, five, and seven. There goes Chandler Smith with that 150 pound bag. Seven reps done for him. Noah Olson is on the floor. And here comes Justin Medeiros for Team Go Watt. And that was Willie George going rep and rep with Chandler Smith. And I spoke to him yesterday and he said, hey, man, I might have retired from individual competition, but I have not stopped training. I feel great. Noah Olson is just now a rep ahead of Justin Medeiros. Olsen with a really good pace there on the left side of your screen. Team Tier on the right. Dallin Pepper trying to keep his team in third place in this heat. Now Morocco and Crouch will start their fifth round. 
Man, and the improvement that Jay Crouch has made this year, he went from outside the top 20 to inside the top 10 at the games, backed it up with the top 10 finish at Rogue. Jay Crouch has made the jump up into that upper echelon of men in this sport. I should say round of five here. Now both men getting to work on their five squats as the gap is increased a little bit for the Ombre Ombres, thanks to Moroccan Young. Here comes Chandler Smith and Willie George. Like a half a clean lead. We've seen the leaders give away the lead on the carry in both heat one and two. This is going to be tight. Well, Willie George may have just overtaken Chandler Smith, and he is now ahead of Smith. But Smith on the left side with a great pace on those squats. It's going to be dead even going into the final athlete. It's going to be Medeiros head to head with Noah Olsen. Olsen slightly ahead of Medeiros on the cleans. Into the squats now. Olsen out front in this set, and he is off on that carry. Will they pass it or will they run? He's going to keep it. Medeiros is going to keep it. So now they start two laps. 6.30, the time to beat. We're a minute away from that. Medeiros is now falling back. Moroccanio's got the bag. Crouch has the bag for Gowad. Crouch trying to catch up to Moroccanio, but Moroccanio hanging on to the lead. And now Chandler Smith for the anchor leg. Trying to hold off Willie George. As the Aubrey Aubrey is looking for their second straight event win here. And Chandler Smith is going to do it. 6-0-3 for the Ombre Hombres. 100 points and their second straight event win here at Tier Wadapalooza. Close battle in a lot of the other lanes. I think last athletes are on the floor for several teams. Talon Pepper getting in, Roman Krenikov passing it off. Valner coming in, I think he's last for their team. Well, team Pixel, they're still working. Jorge Fernandez has that bag on his shoulder. They came in in second place overall. They were only 12 points up on Ombre Hombres. And Team Tier is going to be the one who loves to see that. I think they were third in that heat and third overall, so they'll narrow that gap in their pursuit of the podium today. Team Gowad looks to hang on to the overall lead. The Hombres look to slide into second, and Tier may move up into third place as now more teams closing this thing out as we approach the seven minute mark one minute remaining here strapping lug young lads benoit boulanger closing things out for them they came in in fifth place but just over the seven minute mark so we're going to see some shuffling on the leaderboard for sure that's conquer athlete tony Ficini. Trying to get his team across the finish line. They came in in sixth place overall. All finishes inside the top 10 for Conquer Athlete as Ficini's done. What a race between Gowad and the Ombre Hombres. As Chandler Smith on that final carry is able to hold off. Jay Crouch, or Willie George, pardon me, is, man, this thing was tight from the start. Yeah, Ombre, Ombre's got that one rep lead after the first carry, and man, they made good on the last carry, but we're gonna see here in the middle part that the cleans and the squats were as fast as could be. Gowad gave it everything they had, Willie George there on the right, now you see Jay Crouch going rep for rep with Tola, and man, you can't really ask for a much better race than this. Every single heat of men came down to the carry at the end, and uh, Chandler, Noah, running with that handbag as fast as I could run without it, ended up being just enough as they get their second consecutive event win. And by the way, two for two for the Heat One guys on picks here on Tina Hills. And Chandler Smith holding off Willie George. And Chandler a couple times bobbled that bag. I mean, it didn't seem like much, but in a race that close, it nearly cost him butt. Able to hang on to the lead and second straight event win for the Ombre Hombres. And fourth consecutive top three finish for Team Gowad. We still have two events remaining here as we close out four days of competition at Tier Wadapalooza at 2.10 local time. We go back to Bayside for Waterfall on the Bay. And then tonight over at Flagler, 
6.43 p.m., the final event, Worm Fran for the men. Lauren Khalil is with your event winners, the Ombre Hombres. The second straight win for Ombre Hombres. And what a fight that was. The transitions counted. What was going through your head as you were going head-to-head -head with Goa? Man, I feel like in those moments, you can make a choice when you're in a race with somebody. You either give up and let them have it, or you dig in and fight, and I'm so glad that we dug in. It was worth the race. We came out on top, and it's a pretty incredible feeling. To Tola, you're a competitor, a team athlete that we know very well, but new with Chandler and Noah. How is the communication with the team? What skills are you learning from them and them learning from you? Yeah, I think the communication is the big one. Just adjusting, Whoa. Whoa. Hello. Adjusting, uh, adjusting, adjusting on the fly, and trying to stay as smooth as possible in a workout like that you make one mistake and you go from first to fifth and so really happy with our execution overall going into this you guys were in third place we're narrowing the gap with the point spread what needs to happen in these final two events of the day to stand on top of the podium I think the, uh, the only things you can control are attitude and effort, and uh, both have been super high. With uh, high effort, isn't always just trying hard, right? It's making sure that you're executing well and counting on the people. You can count on the people to the left and right of you. So if we do that, we keep a good attitude going forth, and the effort stays high enough to maintain the level of execution we've had over these last two workouts. We're going to end the weekend happy no matter where we're at in the leaderboard. So that's what we're aiming for. Congratulations, guys. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Two in a row for the Ombre Hombres. Thank you guys. As they go mano y mano with Team Gowad, and things are going to get really interesting on top of the overall standings for the men. Two events remain here for the elite teams. We are far from done at Tier Palooza, so stay with us as our coverage continues from Miami, Florida. I'm obsessed with squeezing a little bit more out of me. I'm obsessed with taking really good care of me. I'm obsessed with wanting to be the best. There are a lot of potential paths to greatness. It starts with the hard work. A relentless commitment to self-awareness. An obsession with forward progress. Anyone has what it takes to be the best. Only the best. Obsess. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover to redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. Realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. It means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be.
stretch, squat, stroke, stride, swing, spin. That's movement, and this is you. And because you were made to move, we want to move with you. Whether you compete for a living or train for life, we've developed a cutting-edge movement experience that's unlike anything else. Because we, like you, are constantly evolving. Our reconstructed platform features daily mobility paths that can be tailored to fit your lifestyle and athletic goals at a time, space, and pace that works for you. We'll build your foundation in here so you can perform out there, work harder, perform longer, and recover faster. Pliability. What's your path?
After 12 years of celebrating fitness, the Tier 1 Apalooza is heading to SoCal. Huntington Beach will be the setting for our second flagship event this September. Miami and SoCal, Tier 1 Apalooza is now by coastal Scan the QR code to learn more. All kinds of fun stuff happening here at Bayfront Park in Miami as we close out four days of competition. Good to see the Green Goblin on vacation, enjoying some <laughs> water sports. Is that Brian Friend? I can't tell. Sure looks like him. Either way, having a good time. We're having a good time here and hope you are too. Thanks for joining us as we get set for the fifth of six events for the team competition. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Tommy Marquez. It's a waterfall on the bay, Tommy. So it'll be kind of a follow the leader type event. First athlete comes out, hits, hits the bike. Once they're off the bike, it releases the next athlete behind them. And then athletes will make their way through each of these portions independently with the athletes behind them having to follow suit until each has done three rounds. Let's talk about keys to this event. Well, you got to lead with speed, Sean. That first athlete is going to dictate when the athletes behind them are able to get out on the floor. So get out quick, give some opportunity for your teammates to follow suit, and then rock the bells, a double kettlebell snatch. Not something we see a ton of, but you really want to be aggressive there because that's the last thing that's also going to release your athlete on the bike. Lead with speed, so I will not be out front for this one. Lane assignments for the first of two heats for Waterfall on the Bay. It's the fifth event that these athletes will face. We'll close out later on tonight over in Flagler. In lane number 12, it's Krieger meets training culture. We'll be keeping an eye on them. They come in in 22nd place overall with 124 points opportunity to maybe bump up into the top heat and get into the top 20. They got some young individual athletes competing at semifinals. Remember, this is an individual effort. Athlete to keep your eye on, 21-year-old Carson Wolf. And the rain is coming down, and that means we have a delay. The athletes are heading back inside. First time the rain has shown up today, and of course it is when we're about to start an event. <laughs> it's one of the fun things about being here at Tierwada Palooza is that the weather is always going to be a factor. Well, we will figure out what's going on, and we will be back as soon as we know what the plan is. So stay with us here at Tierwada Palooza.
After 12 years of celebrating fitness, the Tier Wadapalooza is heading to SoCal. Huntington Beach will be the setting for our second flagship event this September. Miami and SoCal. Tier Wadapalooza now by Coastal. Scan the QR code on your screen to learn more. Let's try this again. Day number four continues here, and we thought we might be able to escape Mother Nature, but we have not. Thanks for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Tommy Marquez. Brian Friend is out there on the Bayside stage, and we have activated the contingency plan. Event number five of six for the teams has now changed, Tommy. Mother Nature has impeccable timing, but that's all right. We'll give them a little pump fake, get that shot off anyways. We're going to make a few adjustments to the overall test. We're going to swap out those box step overs, and we're going to trade them out with 24 reverse lunges. Uh, other than that, it's going to be pretty much the same. Have 18 calories on the bike, and then the reps on the snatches will stay the same as well. So 12 snatches. It's a waterfall type of event. You have to do three rounds for each teammate. And it's going to be a follow the leader type format. So first athlete will get out and on the bike. Once they once they're off, then that releases the second athlete to get onto the floor. And then again, that athlete, the second athlete on the bike cannot leave the bike until the first athlete completes all of the work with the kettlebell. So two main checkpoints there that will release athletes to progress through this. Once all three athletes have completed three rounds, that's when the workout is done. Still awaiting the athletes in the first of two heats now for the elite women's teams at Bayfront Park here in Miami. That familiar backdrop that we've come accustomed to seeing anytime we're here at Tier Wadapalooza. We're going to take a quick break yet again and wait for the athletes to take the floor. And when they do, we will be ready to bring you the beginning of event number five, Waterfall on the Bay here at Tier Wadapalooza.
now we mean it. We are ready for the start of event number five for the elite teams here at Bayfront Park at Tier Wadapalooza. The floor has been taken care of. The contingency plan has been enacted, and the athletes for heat number one are out there at Bayside Stage. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Tommy Marquez. Brian Friend will be keeping us updated out there on the barge at Bayside. Things have changed. This is the new event that these athletes will be taking on. Third time's a charm, Sean. Athletes are going to follow one after the other, moving through 18 calories on the echo bike. Once that first athlete is done on the bike, the second athlete can be released to work. Then they'll do some work on the kettlebell with some front rack lunges and some kettlebell shoulder to overhead. Those last two movements will be the next checkpoint when an athlete gets through that releases the athlete off the bike. So two different checkpoints. When each athlete has done three rounds, then time is done. We had keys for one event. How, if at all, do they apply now to this new version? I think they still apply. Lead with speed. That first athlete is going to set the pacing on releasing the athletes behind it. You want to get someone out there fast and quick. Get your athletes out on the floor to use their fitness. And then you got to rock the bells. I think this puts, a, with this new contingency plan, puts an emphasis on quality front rack position with those kettlebells, particularly with the lunges and then obviously with the shoulder to overhead. So good position will make you successful. First of two heats for the elite women's teams. 13 teams will be out there on the barge at the Bayside stage. Krager meets training culture. They are in lane number 12. They come in in 22nd place overall, but three talented individual athletes who should excel at this challenge. Yeah, you have a pair of semifinals athletes, including 21-year-old Carson Wolf, an up-and-coming athlete to pay attention to out of Rhino please. CrossFit, competed at the West semifinal last year. Remember, this is a in series of individual efforts. Three, two, one, go. Right. We are underway, opening heat for event number five, the second to last event that the teams will face here at Tier Wadapalooza. 18 calories on the bike, and then it's the reverse front rack kettlebell lunges, 24 of those and then 12 shoulder to overhead. That is the Reebok crew in lane number nine, another team that's made up of three very talented individual athletes. Yep, two athletes with a pair of games appearances as individuals, Michelle Basnet and Elisa Fuliano, and then Allison Scuds, a well-accomplished individual athlete, has been at semifinals and regionals for the large part of the last decade. Something to keep in mind as we work our way through this event, the kettlebells will only advance after round two. Team Treta and Base Wellness right next to each other. Wearing the exact same things. It's Team Treta on the left. Base Wellness is on the right. They were the first two teams to get their initial athlete through to the 24 reverse front rack lunges. Now the athlete on the bike cannot advance until the athlete in front of her is completely done with all the work in the round, and each athlete will perform three rounds. Just about every team has their first athlete onto the front rack lunges. U.S. Army Warrior Fitness Team, that's City Moskovitz in the bottom left-hand part of your screen. Michelle Baznet going through her reverse lunges. I like Michelle's positioning. She had her knuckles turned in, pressed against her head, almost bracing for those kettlebells. Anita Pravati is on her shoulder to overhead. And now Tata Ramon will be able to take over after completing her 18 calories on the bike. This is the first round for all these teams. Again, they will not advance the kettlebells until it is round number three. Good to see Anita Pravati out there competing. She's been a long time top tier athlete out in Brazil. We actually got to see her as part of the 2018 open announcement, 18-1, opening up down in Sao Paulo. That was an environment I will never forget. That was absolutely crazy down there for that. Latam brings it, baby. There's Team Treta. They are 24th overall. Their best finish was in the bike race event, the one that was held offside. They took seventh in that.
That's a U.S. Army Warrior Fitness Team. Or pardon me, that's the Leap and Lemurs in lane 14. That was Marissa Gonzalo now putting down the kettlebells. 15-minute time cap here. The Krager meets training culture. They have now moved themselves into the lead. Verena, Evelyn, Reimers, Carson Wolf, and Helena Avendano. They are in the now middle of your screen. There's some wiggle room to play with for these athletes here, particularly once you get an athlete in front of you onto the kettlebells. There's going to be more than enough time for you to get those 18 calories. So the question becomes, are you more comfortable sprinting and then having some rest to attack those kettlebells? Or would you much rather pace it to where you're basically getting off when the athlete in front of you is done? Elena Avendano is onto her shoulder to overhead. 12 reps here, 35 pounds in each hand. Krager meets training culture on the left side. Second and third on the right, Team Treta in lane six. On the left side of that box on the right side of your screen, and base wellness on the right in lane number seven. Larry Moss, our floor announcer, out there. Let the crowd know we are in round number two. See Anita's positioning here where her palms are almost open, giving her fingers and grip a little bit of a rest. Knuckles pointed towards her head. That allows you to create a shelf almost similar to like a back rack lunge. And then once she gets to the shoulder overhead, hands will roll down, more of a solid front rack position. Just slight adjustments that ease the stress on the shoulders. The Krager meets training culture. That is Verena Evelyn Reimers. On her shoulder to overhead as they are in the lead here. Again, coming in in 22nd place overall, 124 points. Always good to take care of the camera lens. Working fast through those shoulder to overheads. And they'll switch out partners now. Almost simultaneous between our two leaders. That's Carson Wolf. On to the reverse lunges. We are in round two of three. Each athlete has to be having to do three rounds here. They will advance their kettlebells only once. That is at the beginning of round number three. The team Treta in lane number six are on the right side of your screen in the middle. That's Tata Rebain who is on the reverse lunges. She's got an interesting position. Her elbow's a little bit more pointed forward. At least as far as the shoulder girdle is concerned. That's gonna be a lot more similar to her shoulder to overhead. Sometimes you want to change up the position just a little bit to save some fatigue. Final three reps for Carson Wolf for Krager meets training culture. Now onto the shoulder to overhead. Past six and a half minutes here, 15 minute time cap. First of two heats. And they are in transition. Krager meets training culture, lane number 10, now coming into view. Now middle screen in the all black. That is Helena Avendano, who is on the reverse lunges for Krager meets training culture. That's a, that's a tough position right there, letting the kettlebells almost fall off the back. Obviously it requires a tremendous amount of shoulder mobility and some pretty good grip strength too because it is putting some pressure on those palms. The team Treta is now putting a little pressure on Krager Me's training culture for the lead here. You see just the, the faster cycle rate on the lunges for team Treta. Vivi Aiello for Team Treta. 
That's a good save with the kettlebell. It slipped a little bit forward, but able to lock that out. All three of their team members, masters athletes. It's impressive. Elena Avendano is working through her shoulder to overhead, in the all black. Prager meets training culture. Lorena Evelyn Reimer is getting set to move her way to the kettlebells and perform her reverse lunges. And now training culture is into round three. They were able to make up some ground there in that last round. You could see Avendano, a little bit of the interference from the bike into the lunges, starting to slow down her cadence just a little bit, opening up the door for Treta. Reimer's on her reverse lunges on the left side. The right is Team Treta. Leap and Lemers in lane 14. Sammy Corzelli on the shoulder to overhead in the orange. We're approaching the nine minute mark, six minutes left before we hit the 15 minute time cap. Anita Pravati is now done. And here comes Tata Ribon. The Krager Meets training culture has fallen back of these two teams. Team Treta on the left and base wellness on the right. As I think that's Madeline Brooker on the right side in the pink shorts. And this crew from base wellness out of CrossFit New England, all three women under 25, a really young up and coming athlete, Emma Gardner. Right now in 16, pretty impressive showing given the depth of field here for, for that crew. The old guard trying to hold off the new guard there in lane six and lane seven. Look at Taylor Koss in the orange shirt for the Leap and Lemurs in lane 14. Less than five to go. And all the teams are in their third round. I think that's a, a really cool comparison between, you know, two different teams. Tata Ramane is 41 years old. She's more than double the age of Emma Gardner. And here they are at the Tier Wadapalooza Bayside stage, throwing down side by side, competing for the same prize. Prager meets training culture back in third place. Now they're on the left side in the all black. And Team Treta now has their final athlete onto the reverse lunges. That is Vivi Aiello. Next to her base wellness, Katrina DiGiacomo. It's important to know that the time will stop once they lock out their last shoulder to overhead here. Emma Gardner in the background there, in the pink shorts on the bike, will be the last athlete for base wellness as Team Treta now putting the finishing touches on what looks like will be a heat win. And that's it. 11.40 unofficially for Team Treta to set the time to beat with one heat remaining. Dixieland Delight in lane five, they are now done. So they're gonna take second place in the heat. The trio of Becca Dennison, Mary Helen Saunders, and Sydney Smith. Fire Barnes Club, they're in lane two on the very far side of your screen on the left. Leaving Lemurs in lane 14 in the all orange. Marissa Gonzalo. Closing out her set of shoulder overhead. There's Elisa Fuliano. And the Reebok crew is finished. Alice's Guts coming up to congratulate Fuliano. Less than two and a half minutes to go. 
Deep in Lemurs in lane 14, inside of them, sweet, sticky, thick, and pretty. <laughs> Some of the more entertaining names here, Kelsey Williams on the kettlebells. Leaves very little to the imagination. <laughs> lane three, the Limey girls. As the Leap and Lemurs are getting set to finish up. 12 shoulder to overhead for Sammy Scorzelli in the orange top. Inside two minutes before we hit the time cap. The trailer Park girls are done, and now the Fire Barns Club, they are through. Scorzelli trying to close things out for the Leap and Lemurs. And she is finished. Three teams out there still working. Make that now one. And that is lane 13. That's sweet, sticky, thick, and pretty. Kelsey Williams on the shoulder overhead. She's done. All the teams in heat number one getting done inside that 15 minute time cap, but it's Team Treta. The Masters athletes scoring one for the old folks. Giving all of us hope for our twilight years. 11 minutes, 40 seconds, as we have now one heat remaining. So despite the changes, things work out pretty well for Team Trader. Yeah, they were able to hold off a push from a few athletes. They were in a close one early on. But even as you got a nice push from the base wellness crew, just to their left, Tata Hermana, Rabani, Anita Pravati, and Vivi Aiello, a strong performance showing that, hey, these Masters athletes, they got some, they got some juice in this team format. Putting out the early time to beat what could be one of their best performances of the weekend so far. And they were consistently towards the front. Their best performance so far this weekend, their only top 10 performance, came in the opening event that was held off site. That was bike race when they took seventh place. A heat win here for Team Trey to 11 minutes, 40 seconds. We will see if that holds heading into the second and final heat of Waterfall on the Bay, the second to last event that the women will face here at Tier Wadapalooza. Heat two coming up next. Final day of competition at Tier Wadapalooza rolls on here as we are in the final heat for the elite women's teams in event number five, the second to the last event that they will face in their competition. Thanks for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Tommy Marquez. Brian Friend is down there at the Bayside stage. Event number five is Waterfall on the Bay, and it has changed due to weather. Yeah, that middle portion, the stationary lunges, they were swapped out for the box step overs. 12 double kettlebell snatches became 12 kettlebell shoulder to overhead. 
It's going to be a follow the leader style. You have one athlete going out first after they're done with the bike. It'll release each subsequent athlete behind them. And then the second portion on the kettlebells, once the lead athlete is done with that, the athlete could leave the bike until all three are done. The event has changed. Have the keys changed? No, I don't think so. I, you still want to lead with speed. Your strong athlete that's going to be fast through the bike, get him out there in front, get your other athletes out on the floor competing. And then obviously, you still got to rock the bells. That's a ton of kettlebell lunging and shoulder to overhead. So the efficiency there, we've seen some teams already in the first heat be able to make a move on the kettlebells. Lena Simons for the second and final heat. 14 teams out there on the Bayside stage. And we've talked about how this is an individual test here. In lane number nine, Scandinavian, three very talented individual athletes. And right now, Scandinavian sits in third place overall. They are 12 points back, a stronger than the 90s trend for second. Yeah, Matilda Garns, Rebecca Vittison, two individual games athletes. Annika Greer, an athlete that a lot of people feel is on that game's echelon. And this is a good opportunity for them to solidify their spot for the podium heading into tonight's event. Three, two, one, go. All right. We are underway. 11 minutes, 40 seconds is the time to beat from Team Treta in heat number one. And we start with the 18 calories on the bike. After this, it's the 24 front rack lunges and 12 shoulder to overhead. As you heard Tommy say, the athlete behind you cannot get off the bike until you are done with all the work. Scandinavian, again, third place overall. They have back-to-back -back top three finishes. And really, this first athlete's got to be the one that you're just ready to go bonkers on this on this bike. You're going to have to sell out early and hope that your recovery will allow you to kind of dial in on these kettlebell lunges. Team Ice Barrel in lane four. They were off of the bike first. Brooke Wells leading the way for her team. Team Ice Barrel, they are creeping up the overall standings. Their fifth place overall, 301 total points. And as we have gotten used to, they're a popular pick amongst the fans with the Heat 1 app. And the Heat 1 staff agrees with them on this one. I mean, as we said, this is an individual workout really a collection of individual efforts and there's no team in this field that has more individual accomplishments than team ice barrel and it starts with brooke wells an individual games athlete since 2015 multiple finishes inside the top five at the games and no surprise she's out front grace walton making quick work of these Kettlebells, Grace, one of the athletes that has doubled up in both the individual and team competitions this weekend. There's Kelly Baker for stronger than a 90s trend who put themselves in second place overall, courtesy of their event win in the Sandbag Sand earlier today. And they have been slowly gaining steam, improving each event going from seventh to third to first. There's the Lycan gang. They currently sit in fourth place overall. And for more on them, let's go to Brian Friend. Thanks, Sean. Ran into the other members of the AB CrossFit crew, the men that are competing in the elite division, and they said that the Lycan gang girls felt like they survived the sandbag workout. They're really excited for the last two events, and they are believe they are firmly in the conversation for a podium finish. Lycan gang fourth place with 310 points, only 22 back of Scandinavian for that final spot on the podium. Stronger than a 90s trend. They are your leaders right now as Emily Lundberg is on those reverse lunges. That's an excellent pace there. The, the contingency plan was swapping for these lunges. I really think just highlighted the emphasis on lower body strength and power for these lunges over just eight box step overs see the raw power of the 90s trend team stronger than a 90s trend they are your leader team ice barrel on the left with Paige powers in the black and red shorts they sit in second and then the lichen gang in lane eight maria quintero on the reverse lunges right now 11 minutes 40 seconds from team Treta. that is the top time out of heat number one 
push themselves into the top three. Lovely Lundberg hold. Was able to hand things off to Kelsey Keel. Kelly Baker's back there on the bike. Stronger than the 90s trend, 344 points, 24 back of RX performance for first place. Lichen Gang, lane number eight. And even though the AB CrossFit team that was at the games this year maybe didn't quite perform the way they expected. Anyone remembers back to semifinals? They were one of the teams that really caught fire or some of the talk of the semifinal seasons with how they performed and earned their way to Madison. That's Diana Vicentelli on the left side for the Lycan gang and on the right is the team that leads in the black and blue, Kelsey Keel, maintaining the lead that they built in round number one. Here comes Kelly Baker. Top three are still stronger than the 90s trend. Team Ice Barrel in second and the Lycan Gang in third. With Bailey Rail taking her turn on those 35 pound kettlebells. 24 reverse lunges here. And it's Paige Powers back on the bike. Ice Barrel fifth place. Overall, they had a win in Uno Dos Tres last night and then followed that up with another top five performance. They finished fourth in the Sandbag Sand out at Tina Hills. They're a popular pick amongst everyone to walk away, maybe on top this weekend, but tough start to the weekend, a 14th in the bike race and a 10th in Worms Can't Swim left them kind of pulling from behind a little bit. Kelly Baker and stronger than the 90s trend continue to lead. Now on to her second of three sets of shoulder to overhead. And then after, the, after Emily Lundberg is off the bike and she finishes her kettlebell work, they will be into the third and final round and that's when they will advance those kettlebells into the final box. And now the question starts to become, where is RX performance? The team that they're chasing on top of the leaderboard because 24 points separate them and stronger than a 90s trend. That's the difference between first place and seventh place in this event with how close it has been through these first couple of rounds. Stronger than the 90s trend is, a li is live for the overall lead right now going into this final event if they can hold on. Maria Longfors for RX performance. She's right next to Emily Lundberg, right side in the dark blue top is Longfors for RX performance. They are in the top five right now. Towards the front of the pack here. But stronger than the 90s trend, if this holds, they're gonna cut into that 24 point lead that RX performance has in the overall standings. Emily Lundberg, left side of your screen on her second set of shoulder to overhead. She will advance the kettlebells and now Kelsey Keel back on the bike. As soon as she's done, she'll get to work on her third and final round of Kettlebell movements. Sitting in that number two position going into this event. RX performance has yet to finish outside the top five. Coming off a second place finish in the Sandbag Sand earlier today. About seven and a half minutes gone by as we hit the halfway point of this event. 11 minutes 40 seconds is the top time for Team Treta in heat number one. Lead the way, Adley won. Same story in lane number 13 for Fearless Misfits. Team, Team Ice Barrel and Brooke Wells, second in from left. On the right is NGH, that's Ubjord Valdemar's daughter for NGH, who coming in 10th place overall. They were atop the overall standings after the first two events. They, they definitely like the longer events. They won the bike race and then fourth and Worms can't swim, but a slight dip in performance once we got back into the shorter, more classic CrossFit type tests. Well, Brooke Wells and Ice Barrel are threatening to take over first place here in this heat. 
Bailey Rail goes through her 24 front rack reverse kettlebell lunges, 35 pounds in each hand, and it's Paige Powers back on the bike. Powers, the individual champion at Tier Palooza last year. Stronger than the 90s trend now is moved into second place behind Ice Barrel. That's Kelly Baker on the far right side of your screen for stronger than the 90s trend in that black top and blue shorts. Less than six minutes to go before we hit the time cap. Kelly Baker just got two no reps in a row. Looking like she's starting to struggle with those front rack lunges. This is, this is the point when the legs start to fill up with blood. And that was perfectly timed between Rail and Paige Powers. Powers right off the bike and gets immediately to work on her final set of 24 reverse kettlebell lunges. That's the gambit. Do you want to get right off the bike and into the lunges, or do you prefer to sprint and then have a little bit of recovery time? Team Ice Barrel looking to pick up their second event win of the competition. Fifth place overall coming in with 301 points. Only 31 back a Scandinavian for the final spot on the podium with one event remaining after this. And they're only nine back a Lycan gang, so starting to build a little bit of momentum, chipping away at the, the deficit between the top four teams. Paige Powers now has 12 reps remaining and plenty of time to get those done. Lane five is Team Barine. Right next to Paige Powers, they've moved into second place as Powers now is going to put the finishing touches on another event win for Ice Barrel. 10.26.29 seconds. A team Marine, Frederica Malrup, Astrid Tin, and Silja Zilo. are getting set to finish up. There's Annika Greer for Scandinavian. She's in the third and final round. And off your screen, Emily Lumber just finished for stronger than a 90s turn. She absolutely ripped through their shoulder to overhead. She passed two to three teams on that last implement alone. They're in 10.56, that's gonna be good enough for second place. They'll only surrender three points to Team Ice Barrel. That's NGH, Nicole Crouch. She is done. Fearless Misfits have finished up, along with Scandinavian. It looks like Liking Gang is still out on the floor. They are right in the middle in the long white sleeved top. There's Plus Ultra on the left. Pardon me, Lifters Girls on the left and Kolesnikov team. Just saw them. That's a good sign for the Ice Barrel team climbing the leaderboard. Team Frog Grips is done in lane number 11 is Mile High Muscles are finished as well. Still three minutes to go before we hit the time cap. Looks like plus ultra there. Jesse Smith on the kettlebell. Plus ultra on the left. Lifters Girls on the right. Plus Ultra, 11th place overall coming into this event with 246 points. Trying to crack the top 10, they were only seven points away from NGH. Lane 14 is Tori in black. Amy Alessi on her reverse lunges. And they are the only team that is still working here in the second and final heat. They were the last team in for this final heat. We reshuffle before the final. They are in danger of falling out of the top heat for the finale. 12 final shoulder to overhead. We have less than two minutes before we hit the time cap. Alessi is chipping away at those. And as soon as she's done, event five for the elite women's teams will be finished. And that'll do it. Team Ice Barrel, 10 minutes, 26.29 seconds. They pick up their second 
event win here at Tier Wadapalooza. They're second in three events and their third straight inside the top four as they have built a ton of momentum heading in to the sixth and final event tonight. And they, they led with strength right from the outset. Perennial top 10 contender Brooke Wells out in front early, handed the baton to Bailey Rail. It sure helps on an individual effort to have three individual games athletes on your squad. There was a push for a few teams towards the middle of this test, stronger than the 90s trend was pushing towards the end, but Brooke leading from the front each time was able to hand it off cleanly. They timed it well. There was a perfect transition between Bailey Rail and Paige Powers getting off the bike to close this out. By the time Paige got to the kettlebells, she was able to bring it home for the win. 100 points and another event win for Team Ice Barrel. Unofficial results. Has them in first place. Stronger than the 90s trend. They do a little damage control. They're only going to seed three points to Team Ice Barrel. They take second place overall. RX Performance will finish in third, followed by Team Barine, and then NGH rounding out the top five as the top seven times come from that second and final heat. Team Ice Barrel, they pick up their second win in three events, and they are with Brian Friend. Thanks, Sean. A little bit of a change to the workout there. Where was there more urgency, on the bike or on the kettlebells? Well, first we thought it was going to be on the bike, but when it got changed, we were like, we're going to have to go fast on those, those lunges, and it ultimately ended up being a good pace on each one, so like pushing the pace through the whole workout. Maybe not the day that people expected yesterday. What was the mood overnight as you guys tried to reframe and get ready for a good day today? Um, I think we all have enough experience of not having a good day. So it didn't really phase us. Um, we're all individual athletes. So we came out here to do team just to have fun. So we're just kind of carrying that to the weekend and making sure the number one theme is just having fun. As you say, individual athletes. You mentioned yesterday the worm was a little dicey. We got the worm later tonight. How do you guys feel about that? I think we feel pretty good. I think the clean and jerk is a little bit more technical with the worm. Um, and we're, I think we practiced thrusters like once and it went pretty good. So I think we're feeling pretty confident with that and we love gymnastics as well. So I think it'll be good. Well, great job already today. We're looking forward to see you guys on Flagler. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Two wins in three events for Team Ice Barrel and they move up yet another spot in the overall standings. They go from fifth up to fourth now 401 points only seven points back of scandinavian for that final spot on the podium and i think this is going to be an excellent race for the final spot between ice barrel and scandinavian and 20 points may seem like it's insurmountable but one slip up with the worm could be the difference something to keep your eye on as we head to this finale with worm friend one event remains for the elite women's teams Two are left for the men. They will take on Waterfall on the Bay. Stay with us, everybody. Our coverage of the 2024 Tier Wana Palooza continues here from Miami, Florida.
The men are out at Bayside Stage as they are set for their fifth event of the competition, the second to last event that they will face here at Tierwada Palooza. I'm Sean Woodland with Tommy Marquez. Brian Friend is out there at the Bayside Stage. And we're going to go as originally written here in event number five, Waterfall on the Bay. Mother Nature couldn't interfere with this one, at least for the men's side. Same order as the women as far as one athlete following the next. You're going to do 24 calories on the echo bike. We're actually going to do eight kettlebell box step overs this time at 12 double kettlebell hang snatches. Once an athlete gets off the bike, it releases the athlete behind them. And then again, when the athlete gets after the hang snatches, that releases the athlete okay, off so of the bike. What decision. keys do you have for us? We Got to lead with speed. We've seen from the women's side, successful teams put their fastest athlete out in front, get the rest of the team out onto the co competition floor chipping away and then rock the bells. Those kettlebells are stout, especially as you get into the later round. So efficiency on the kettlebells can be the difference maker. Well, the judges are now being gathered there and it looks like we may be going back to the contingency plan on this one, which means we will have a delay. The boxes will be removed. We just can't have nice things in this event. I spoke too soon. Mother Nature was listening. And I think that's where our production meeting is going to take place tonight. It's like a nice little setting here at Bayfront Park. Right, we're gonna give our and it's covered with a nice little thatched roof there. Not bad. Rain is no issue with a daiquiri in your hand. <laughs> Always all kinds of fun waterborne vessels out here at Tier Palooza. The, the, the athletes have now just been informed that the contingency plan for this event is being activated. There's still a lot of moisture out there on the competition floor. But let's take a look at how this event now will change as the boxes will probably remain on the floor, but they're going to be removed from the event. Echo bike stays the same. Step overs turn into the front rack stationary lunges and now the snatches are shoulder to overhead. So the same thing that we just watched with the women. I actually think for the legs, this is much worse. You compare tw 24 front rack stationary lunges with compared to eight box step overs, that's really gonna put a little pump into the quads, especially as we get into the second and third round. Still a stout test. And as was the case with the women, the event changed, but the keys do not. You can hear the athletes being briefed on the floor. Even though the box step overs have been removed from the event, it does look like the boxes are going to stay out on the floor just to save some time from keeping the Fantastic crew of volunteers here from having to do even more work. Here are the lane assignments for heat number one for the men. 14 teams on the floor. Velich train cult in lane number five. They have a chance to score some points here and move themselves up the overall standings. Sitting in 18th coming into this event. Based on the setup so far, the top 15 teams will be in the top heat. So a good push here. Maybe set yourself up against the best going into the Worm Fran finale. Another team out there that's got some individual games experience. That's Team Evolve as you take a look at the least train cult. They're in lane number five. Thank you One of, very much seems that. like a myriad Thank of teams this. from Train Colt They're on the right made it here this weekend. They dominated the team qualifiers. Train, the lead Train Colt on the right side of your screen. That's true We're coach going. Train Colt on the left in the all black that you're looking at now. The trio of Miko Lilior, Kevin Jurors, and Martek Dipka. So two Train Colt teams in adjacent lanes. Here in the first of two heats for the men in the contingency version of this event. An athlete on Belize, I think, keep your eye on Yuri Marincheko, an athlete who's won events at semifinals as an individual. Three, two, one, go. 
And here we go, folks. I don't have to give you the layout of the event. Week number one has begun. 24 calories on the bike. And then the 24 front rack reverse lunges. And then 12 shoulder to overhead with 53 pound kettlebells in each hand. In lane seven, that's team Evolve, Nicholas Heck, Brandon Luckett, and Joe Munno as Brandon Luckett is the first man out on the bike. And I swear, it feels like every year I talk to Brandon, he's like, you know what, I'm retired, I'm stepping away. <laughs> and then sure enough, every year we see him back out in the competition floor in some form or fashion. Just when you think you're out, they reel you back in. Just to go over the rules once again, Joe Munno, who's back there on the bike, he can't get off the bike until Brandon is done with all of the kettlebell movements. Down in lane number 10, the Mayhem Outlaws, they're your leaders right now. That's Alexander Calron. He was injured earlier, but is back out competing now. And it's good to see him back out there. He had a pec injury that forced him to withdraw the same pec that he injured during semifinals. He said he was hoping that it wouldn't be too serious and he would be able to continue in it. This is a good sign if he's able to move through those shoulder to overhead pretty efficiently. Here comes Jack Rosema. Jack had a great run on the individual side. Some strong performances on Thursday and Friday. Now, even though the Mayhem Outlaws are competing, they are not accumulating points because they haven't used the same three athletes throughout the competition. And also it just speaks to the strength of the Mayhem brand, right? They they just had a bunch of athletes ready to go, including Jake Locker, who is one of the head, one of the head programmer and coaches for the Mayhem program. They don't rebuild, they just reload. Exactly. It's like the Alabama of fitness. Kinesis Black that you just saw. They're all the teams here in round one. All the athletes will do three rounds of these movements. Krypton out there as well. They're in lane number nine. See Christoph Horvath, the bottom left side of your screen. Now the rain's really starting to come down again. Ristov Horvath along with Austin Spencer and Alex Smith. Horvath is done and Smith can get off the bike and he can get to work on the kettlebells. 12 shoulder to overhead. is team evolved Nicholas Heck the blue shirt next to them is the Fox Ferret Manatee men Daniel Coots right side of your screen now just passing out of view lead strain cult true coach train cold out there lane three is the Midwest Cowboys Matt Pratt DJ Kessler and Riley Smith Riley Smith the man on the kettlebells right now Kessler's back on the bike see what we got going on Kettlebells only advance after the second round. Midwest Cowboys coming in at 23rd place overall with 100 points. Past the four minute mark, 15 minute time cap here in the first of these two heats for the men. Now Austin Spencer is onto the kettlebells with Christoph Horvath on the bike for Krypton down there in lane number nine. Starting to rain just a little bit more, but this was the Bayside, Bayside stage where we had the water entries this stage a little bit better equipped to handle some of that moisture. Jonathan Ellingson on the bike for Kinesis Black in the black shirt right side of your screen. Next to them is Rehab to Perform. Jesus. 
Brandon Luckett, bottom left side of your screen, has now just put the kettlebells down after his shoulder to overhead. Midwest Cowboys, lane three, there's DJ Kessler. Finishing up his 12 shoulder to overhead. Matt Pratt still back on the bike. As soon as he's done, he'll be able to move to the kettlebells. All these teams in round number two. With five and a half minutes gone by. Our clock in the upper left-hand corner not working right now. We'll keep an eye on the one on the floor for you. Matt Pratt to the kettlebells for the Midwest Cowboys. He's always keeping it close to a home. He's got heavy hitters coming up next. He's got those looking to make it time to beat. Kevin Jurz is the man on the right for true coach train call. On the left, 10 skills. Pro one, Rafael Gautier. The light blue top onto the shoulder to overhead for his team. See the move, the fatigue starting to pile up there for the Midwest Cowboys. Legs starting to get a little wobbly, wobbly, getting the baby deer legs. Mayhem Outlaws making the switch as Alexander Caron comes back in again. They're in the event, they just can't score any points because they have not used the same three athletes for the entire competition. But Leo you know, Caron and Rosema, Stefan Cosette, like, they want to finish this thing out. And it's nice that they're still able to compete. At least go out there, throw down with their buddies. Came all this way out to Miami. Nice consolation. Alexander Corona has been in the games individually four times. He was on a team in 2019. Best career finish as an individual came in 2020 when he took 16th. The Mayhem Outlaws are leading, but again, they can't win. The Midwest Cowboys in lane three are technically your leaders. They are on the right side of your screen. Briley Smith with the kettlebells as his team is getting set to enter the third and final round. The Mayhem Outlaws, Jack Rosemuth is in round three. Riley Smith for the Midwest Cowboys. Is now done, and he and his team are into round number three. Here comes DJ Kessler for the Midwest Cowboys. Matt Pratt back on the bike. He's still moving well. He was doing almost three to two for the athlete next to him. Midwest Cowboys now on the left side of your screen. Third team in. Kinesis Black at the opposite end of the floor. They're now on the left side of your screen. That's Ben Simons. This team solidly in second place. Here comes Jonathan Ellingson. Your leader in 10. Way out in front. Again, the Mayhem Outlaws leading right now, but not a factor in the overall points. Midwest Cowboys, DJ Kessler finished with his shoulder to overhead. Matt Pratt's got to close out his 24 calories on the bike, and then he can finish things up for his team. This is one of, this is one of the first times we've actually seen the athlete on the bike have a clear path ahead of him and not and actually be the one holding up the team. Final two calories for Matt Pratt and the Midwest Cowboys. Jonathan Ellingson is working his way through those shoulder to overhead for Kinesis Black. Now Pratt with 36 reps remaining. 
as we are past the 10 minute mark 15 minute time cap here in this event first of two heats in waterfall on the bay there's Christoph Horvath for Krypton Isaiah Weber is on the bike for Kinesis Black and he is done Isaiah games athlete in the teenage divisions this past season he finished eighth in the 16 to 17. That's Bartek Lipka for True Coach Train Colt in lane four. Midwest Cowboys Matt Pratt right next to him on the left side of your screen working on his reverse lunges. Kinesis Black on the left. Isaiah Weber. True Coach Train Colt there. Getting ready to finish up here on the right side. Now 12 shoulder to overhead remaining for Bartek Lipka. None of his teammates are working. This is his final portion. As they have taken the lead from the Midwest Cowboys. Final rep and Trugo Trinkholt got a no rep on that final repetition. Matt Pratt trying to catch up, but he's not going to be able to do it. And true coach Train Colt is in 11:28 unofficially. Fox Ferret Manatee men are in as well. Man, they are hard to miss with those <laughs> wardrobe choices. Yeah, some contrasting patterns on the outfit there, but still able to find some success here and sneak up into second for the Heat. So Kinesis Black, they just finished up. Have to wait for the official times, but unofficially, True Coach Train Colt across first 11 28. But we will check on that. The Midwest Cowboys now, as Briley Smith is the last man to go for his team. Got a great pace going on these reverse lunges. Team Overtake is now done. And the black shirts on the left side of your screen. Rehab to perform is next to them in lane 13. That's Simon Pierre on the kettlebells, paired with Nicholas Bibic and Felix Antoine LeMay. Midwest Cowboys are done. Rehab to perform crew out of DECA CrossFit, which was home to DECA comp team, Michelle LaTondra at one point. Tyler Lloyd for DSM Performance TCC. He's done. Next to him, 10 Skills Pro 1. Tristan LeClerc on his final set. That leaves one team left and that's the squad down the lane number 13 rehab to perform as Simon Pierre is on his final 12 reps and that will do it 1350 unofficially for rehab to perform 1128 unofficially for true coach train cult the top time with one heat remaining you go lily or kevin jurors and bartek lipka lipka running the anchor leg there in round number three bringing it home for his team True coach Train Colt, 21st place overall with 143 points. So one heat remains, heat two for the men coming up next.
We are down to the final heat for event number five for the elite teams of men here at Tier Wadapalooza. Thanks for staying with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Tommy Marquez. Brian Friend is down on the barge there on the Bayside stage. Once again, weather is playing a factor here in the competition, and as a result, we've had to change event number five, Waterfall on the Bay, and the contingency plan has been activated. Yeah, we've swapped out eight kettlebell box stepovers for 24 front rack ke kettlebell stationary lunges, and swapped out some snatches for some shoulder to overhead. Speed kills in this event. Yeah, you got the need for speed, you better lead with speed, Sean. Get your fastest athlete out there, get the other athletes on the floor competing as well. Rock the bells. We've seen athletes start to slow down on these kettlebells towards the end. So good, efficient movement will keep you quick and set you up for success. Got a full slate of teams out there on the Bayside stage. 15 teams will be taking the floor for this second and final heat. Your overall leaders will be right in the middle of the floor. Team Goa, they will be in lane number eight. And next to them is Team Pixel and Hombre, Hombres, top three teams, but also want to keep an eye on lane number, number 12, the Pixel Train Cult. As we mentioned, a, a, a slew of teams from Train Cult out here, but some talented individual athletes on this squad. Fabian Benaitoselis, Guillaume Briant, individual games athlete, Annual Kai, up and comer in the sport as well. Could make some noise here. See the rain really coming down there at the Bayside stage. Unofficially, True Coach Train Cult has the top time, 11 minutes, 28 seconds. Down in lane number nine is Team Pixel. They are in third place overall. They are the Heat One pick, the fan pick, the trio of Three, Noah Olson, Chandler two, Smith, and Tola Marakino. Go. All right, folks, here we go. Well, Team Pixel does have one advantage to their name, that's right Roman Krennikov. Guy just moves at a different pace whenever he's on a machine. Well, 2022 year at the Rogue Invitational, he said that no one else can hang with him on the bike, and he has proven that time and time again, so no surprise that he is the athlete out in front leading this team. Also want to keep an eye on the team down in lane 15, far side of the floor, that's Team Gorilla 911, the Vino brothers and Jason Uda. There's Uda who's on the bike for Team Gorilla 911, Alex Vino waiting for him as Jeremy Vino is working on the kettlebells. Rain really starting to come down now. Credit to the fans, they're still sitting there. Jason Hopper on the right for Team Tier. Next to him, Roman Krenikov for Team Pixel. And that's a great matchup to watch too, because Hopper, one of the best on the machines as well, whether it's bike, rower, skier, He's one of the few that can hang with Roman on those implements time to time. Let's bring in Brian Friend out there at Bayside. Thanks, Sean. Spoke to some of the athletes in heat number one. The, most of the strategies seem to be crank it for 15 cals and coast in the final nine. Still by yourself about 10 seconds of rest before you need to take your turn on the kettlebells. Let's see if heat two athletes have a similar strategy. Thank you, Brian. There's Pat Veller in the white shirt for Trace Leches. Lane three is Omnia. Here comes Jacob Schmidt. We had a great effort earlier today in the sandbag send out of Tina Hills. Jason Uda for Team Gorilla 911. Going through his first set of 24 reverse kettlebell lunges, 53 pounds in each hand. Alex Vino on the bike. Moving fast with those kettlebells on the push press. Lane number eight is Team Gowad. They are your overall leaders. Willie George on his reverse lunges. They have 384 points. They're 12 up on the team on the left side. Noah Olson's team, the Ombre Hombres. And they've had an awesome race with the Ombre Hombres earlier in the sandbag stand. 1-2 in the event overall. It came down to the final few reps. It was an electrifying moment over at Tina Hills. 
Jay Crouch now onto the kettlebells. Justin Medeiros, the two-time fittest man on earth, is on the bike. Chandler Smith on the bike for the Ombre Ombres, who are only 12 points back at Team Gowad for the lead here. And they have been really e exemplifying the atmosphere here at the event. They are having a blast. Had the chance to catch up with them after the last event. I actually think Noah Olsen got a haircut in between the morning event and this afternoon event. He had a little bit more lettuce on top. Team Go out and the Ombre Hombres have finished 1-2 the last two events with the Ombres winning two straight. Team Tier, Jason Hopper, Dallin Pepper, and Ricky Garrard. They are leading the way right now in this heat. 11:28 unofficially the top time from True Coach Train Cult and heat number one. And you can see that the difference in rounds of this first round, Hopper and Krennikov were Side by side, Krennikov got to the shoulder to overhead first. In the second round, you saw the transition happen to the left of Hopper. He was well into the kettlebell lunges before Roman even got there. So the rest of the team and Dallin and Ricky starting to pick up the pace and help them separate. The team tier on the outside looking in when it comes to the podium right now. They come in in fourth place overall. 340 points, 24 back of Team Pixel. Dallin Pepper will take over. These teams are in their second of three rounds. Each athlete has to do three rounds of that circuit. Team Pixel in second place with Team Tier right now. And Conquer Athlete. They are in third. They're working down at lane number five. There is Tony Ficini. Tyler Cook. Taking over on the kettlebells and Will Carter hopping up on the bike. And they had a great performance last night in Uno Dos Tres. They were six overall. One of the performances that's kept him in this top heat. Will Carter with a ton of team experience. They really moved well through the synchro movements and the shuffling order. That was in Uno Dos Tres. These are your top two teams in the heat. Right side, Dallin Pepper and Team Tier. They sit in first place. Next to them on the left, that's Saxon Panchin for Team Pixel. Here comes Ricky Garrard. That was a well-timed transition there. Team Tier starting to open up their lead here. Pixel does have an event win under their belts. They took first place in Worms Can't Swim. Their lowest finish actually came in the prior event, the Sandbag Send, where they took sixth. Ricky Garrard, who is your now two-time individual champion here at Tier Wadapalooza after his performance on Thursday and Friday. Alex Vino for Team Gorilla 911. Not a bad, to the camera. Not a bad weekend for Ricky if he can double up on the podium finishes here for both individual and team. Ricky Garrard is now done. Here comes Jason Hopper. And this should be the start of round three for Team Tier. And it is as Hopper advances the kettlebells, and he now has 36 reps with those remaining. 24 reverse lunges and then 12 shoulder to overhead. Team Tier is the only team right now in their third round. Again, 24 points back of Team Pixel as Team Tier for that third and final spot on the podium. Team Tier is about 14 reps ahead of Team Pixel. Team Tier, Team Pixel, first and second. Conquer Athlete has fallen off that top three pace. The strapping young lads in lane six. There's James Sprague on the left side of your screen. They moved into third here. It's a good sign for both Pixel and Tier. Ombre Ombre is in the center of your screen. Chandler Smith and Gowad, Justin Maderos are middle of the pack right now in this heat. So an opportunity to make up some precious points with some already tight margins with only one event after this remaining. 
Justin Medeiros with now four reps remaining on those 12 shoulder to overhead. Chandler Smith still working on his reverse lunges and James Sprague on his set of 12. Medeiros is now through. But it's Dallin Pepper and company for Team Tier who are way out in front. We're going to pick up their second event win of the competition. Great movement from Dallin. Good positioning with the kettlebell on the return to his front rack. Solid lockout. And perfectly timed transition as Ricky just hopped off the bike. Dallin finished up his work. And this is the final athlete for Team Tier. Not a bad athlete. Bat and clean up here to bring it home. Ricky Garrard. Not afraid to, to go to that dark place. Team Pixel on the left with Saxon Panchik. Just need to stay close to Team Tier. If they can finish second in this heat, they'll maintain that third spot in the overall standings. But Tier will cut into that 24 point lead. Now, 12 reps remaining for Ricky Garrard as Team Tier. Gunning for their first event win of the competition. And look at the build momentum going into event six, and they are done smashing the top time by more than two minutes and picking up 100 points in the process. A lot of, a lot of athletes still out on the floor. The top two teams, Ombre, Ombre. Team Gowad still working through their spots. They're hoping a few teams can slip in there and boost the points gain they're going to make. Will Carter for Conquer Athlete just got on the kettlebells after Tyler Cook finished up. And Conquer Athlete, they're on their final athlete as well. And now the strapping young lads are in. Well, that's going to help out Team Tier. And just before them, Pixel got in ahead of the lads. So that's another team that's going to fit in between them and the leaders. So. Pixel only surrenders a couple of spots to Team Tier for that battle for third place. But the top two teams have yet to finish the top two teams in the overall standings. And now Tola Maracanio is going to fix that. The Ombre Hombres are in. I think Pixel might, but they were only eight points back of the Ombres. So they might actually be able to jump up into second here. See a little position swap on the podium. Well, Gowad is done as well. Not sure where they finished in the pack, but we do know Team Tier was first across the finish line for their first event win of the competition. He's got Complex Wadex in the pink shirts right side of your screen. They're now done. They've had a real, really solid competition. Had a, a few really, really good tests. They seem to like this Bayside stage because this is where they finished second just the day prior with the Worms Can't Swim. So maybe it's Maybe it's the floating bars. They just like the ambiance. Omnia on the left. Canadians from the east on the right. As Hayden Weddle is done for his team. Gowad finished just ahead of the Ombres. So depending if four or five teams were able to sneak in between, we could see an overall lead change as well. Now the Canadians from the east are done. Regardless, it is going to be a lot of fun in the sixth and final event tonight. 12 to the championship very much up for grabs. Riley Smith for Max Lift Australia, and as he always does, Noel Olson's there trying to get the crowd behind Riley. And now Max Lift Australia is in, and all 15 teams are now done. No one, though, did it faster than Team Tier. Dallin Pepper, Jason Hopper, and Ricky Garrard blitzing their way through this event, and they pick up their first event win here at Tier Wadapalooza. This thing wasn't even close. No, there was, it was a, it was pretty tight between Roman Krennikov of, of Gowad and Jason Hopper in that first round, but Team Tier really leaned into the strength of their athletes on the bike. Dallin Pe Pepper hammered his portion, really efficient with the kettlebells. 
And when the third athlete batting cleanup is Ricky Garrard for each round, definitely clears some space for you to take a few chances here. And by the time they got into that second round, they were well ahead and they cruised to a victory. First event win of Tier One Palooza for Team Tier, and they are with Brian Fred. Thank you, Sean. Congratulations, Team Tier. You know, Dallin, you had that world record on the Echo Bike workout back at semifinals, but Jason decided to lead things off here. How'd you guys make the decision about who would go first and second? Oh, man, it was really in the crowd about five minutes ago. Um, we were still talking about it. We didn't know who should go first. And then he's the captain, so he made the decision, and he said basically he knew who the real king of the Echo Bike was, so I should go first. Yeah, I had to let him redeem himself after all year, so. <laughs> Obviously, a lot of conditions here. You know, on paper, I think the workout probably looked good for you either way. Was the change a, a concern at all? Uh, not really a concern. I think the first one would definitely benefit us with the taller athletes we are in the step overs, so. but it seemed to work out. Ricky, we saw you at the 5K the other day. Had an incredible performance on the run. Waited for these guys to come oh, yeah. in. They're two of the best in the bike, though. Could you hang, out, hang with them out there? Ah uh, man, I was a little worried because I'm a bit fatigued for the past two days, but uh, I think I held my own, and um, yeah, I'm pretty stoked that I got got to keep up with the boys. <laughs> well, climbing the ranks, one more to go. We'll see if you guys can hey, climb. We love the rain. We love the rain. Keep bringing it. Thanks, guys. See you tonight. Well, Ricky Garrard certainly didn't look fatigued out there as his team leaves the rest of that heat in its wake and picks up their first event win here at Tier Palooza. One event remains for the elite team, so stay with us, everybody. Our coverage continues here in Miami, Florida. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. It means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. It's okay to want to be strong. It's okay to want to have it all. Recover faster, go further. Diamatize ISO 100. Because settling is unsettling.
Stretch, squat, stroke, stride, swing, spin. That's movement, and this is you. And because you were made to move, we want to move with you. Whether you compete for a living or train for life, we've developed a cutting-edge movement experience that's unlike anything else. Because we, like you, are constantly evolving. Our reconstructed platform features daily mobility paths that can be tailored to fit your lifestyle and athletic goals at a time, space, and pace that works for you. We'll build your foundation in here so you can perform out there. Work harder, perform longer, and recover faster. Pliability. What's your path?
is time for the final event of the Elite Team Competition here at Tier Wadapalooza at Bayfront Park in Miami, Florida. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Brian Friend and Lauren Khalil is out there at a rain-soaked Flagler stage. The sixth and final event is Worm Fran and Brian, it has changed again. Yeah, no shortage of challenge for the competition teams with the weather here and similar to the individuals, we're gonna divert to the strict pull-ups in the interest of the safety of the athletes removing the dynamic gymnastics on the pull-up bar. How does this at all affect the keys to this event? As far as the worm goes, doesn't really change much. Double trouble, you have to manage the thrusters, but also the hold, but strong pullers get to pull. You can change out any way you want on the pull-up bar as opposed to everyone being required to do the same work in the original format. First of two heats here for the elite women. In lane number nine, a team that has three very talented individual athletes, that is the Reebok crew. They do have an athlete from Italy, but the other two of the women on that team hail from the United States. Yeah, and Elisa Fuliana, Allison Scud's pretty good on the upper body gymnastics and with the ability to split the work any way you want, could potentially put a good score up in heat number one. Heat number one is underway. We start with those 27 worm thrusters. Yeah, that adds up, man. Absolutely, it does. And they had the increase in volume earlier today on the bay with the single leg lunges that all the athletes had to do. Saw the worms play a big factor yesterday with the worms can't swim. I think two worm heavy workouts over six on a two day competition is appropriate for a team competition. Reebok crew, they are through 15 of those 27 worm thrusters, along with the three queens. There is the Reebok crew with Elisa Fuliano in front, Allison Scuds in the middle, and Michelle Baznet, who also claims South Africa as her home country. Yeah, actually, get to train with her every once in a while in Charlotte, North Carolina. Kind of fun to be able to see that side of the athlete's preparation at the top level of the sport. Those worms have been sitting out there in the rain. Uh, however much they weighed before, they sure weigh a lot more now, I would, I would think. We have teams starting to move to their first set of pull-ups. Three queens have started their set of 36. Now, they can divide these up however they want. Yeah, that's a nice advantage. The disadvantage is that they didn't have a lot of time to prep for this. So in terms of developing a strategy of who's going to do what for when, how they're going to break it and split those reps, have to be pretty quick on the draw in terms of coming up with a plan and willing to change it if it's not going to plan on and when you're in the middle of the workout. Leaf and Lemurs looking at now in lane five. They are on their pull-ups. Marissa Gonzalo is on the pull-up bar. Taylor Koss and Sammy Scorzelli holding the worm. And now Gonzalo comes back to make the switch as they are through 12 of their first 36 strict pull-ups here. It's spoken with a few teams who had practiced the original version of this workout when the uh, all three athletes had to do the same gymnastics and they said do not underestimate the hold with that worm being soaked and weighing even more. It's not a part of the workout that can be forgotten here. Sammy Scorzelli is waiting for the okay to get to work on those pull-ups. The worm needs to be held by the other two teammates who are not going through reps on that pull-up bar. Still have some teams finishing up their first set of 27 worm thrusters. 13 minute time cap here in this event. And once again, it has changed from the way it was originally constructed due to the weather that we have been experiencing here today at Bayfront Park in Miami. You can see the rain is still coming down out there and the competition team doing a good job of making sure they make the appropriate adjustments and keep the athletes safe. Yeah, no, strict pull-ups can sometimes be something that you're like, how can you enforce this standard? But it's a much better to have a little bit of an iffy situation there than an iffy situation on the safety side of things. Lane 13 is the three queens. They are on the left. They are on their second set of thrusters. So 21 reps now that they need to complete. After that is 27 strict pull-ups approaching the four minute mark and really impressive worm thrusters there the worm basically staying horizontal to the floor throughout we see a lot of teams who lack experience 
getting out of sync with those. They had a 16th place finish, their second best finish of the competition on the warm workout yesterday, so clearly something that they have good capacity with. Well, the Reebok crew, they have also moved back to the warm. You can see them in the middle there in the white and red. They're right of center, discussing some strategy. Lauren Kalil is out there at Flagler. At Lauren, how are these athletes dealing with the weather that we've been dealing with this entire day? Reebok crew is out in lane number nine. Your next team moving forward. With the risers that they have out there, they're extremely wet and slippery. So some of the teams, they've actually double stacked the risers so that they don't have to jump up. They don't have to jump down. They're just bending their legs a bit as they do these pull-ups. A couple of athletes, unfortunately, did slip. Everybody looks okay. And they're really just trying to learn on the fly as they go through this workout. Three queens in lane 13. They are your leaders. They are on their second of four sets of strict pull-ups now 27 reps that they need to complete one athlete working on the pull-up bar while the other two hold the worm great shot there of what lauren was talking about here you know very little room to drop down from the pull-up bar there and so you can land very safely on the boxes i believe that's the limey girls in the pink that we're taking a look at down in lane 16 they're at the far end of the floor from the leap and lemurs who have the worm on their shoulders. They are in the light blue tops and long black, black pants in the middle of your screen right now. And we see a variety of different positions for the two athletes that are there holding the worm. Some of them drape it over the front, some off the back, some with a more level. But I'm telling you what, there's no real way to get comfortable underneath that weight when there's just two of you standing there. Leap and lemurs. We right now sit third place in the heat past the 550 mark. 13 minute time cap here. Lisa Fuliano, the white and red for the Reebok crew. The three queens in lane 13, they are your leaders now on their second to last set of worm thrusters. 15 reps they need to complete before 18 straight pull-ups and then a set of nine and nine to close out the event. And once again, just the efficiency here with the worm. Helps out a ton, saves a lot of energy. Marina Clark in front for her team. The Reebok crew is now moved into second place as they're working on their set of 27 strict pull-ups. The Leap and Lemurs sit in third. And good shot of the mixed grip there, as we saw on the individual side. You can do supinated grip, pronated grip, or mixed grip for your strict pull-ups, but you must make sure to get the full extension at the bottom of every rep. And when you have that mixed grip, the, like the arm length is actually a little bit different, so it is a little bit strange at the bottom extension position. Taylor Koss and Sammy Scorzelli now on the worm for the Leap and Lemurs. Three queens back to the pull-up bar. 18 strict reps for them as they continue to lead the way here. We're just about at the halfway point of the allotted time. Or more than halfway, pardon me. Some of these teams here rolling on close and neck to their fourth round. 222 pounds on the worm. For the rain. For the rain, that's a very good point. <laughs> The RX teams had been out there doing some warm work prior to this, so. Lane 13, three queens. They are well in front here now, a third of the way through. Their second to the last set of strict pull-ups. That Shelby Forney getting off the pull-up bar for three queens. They have four reps remaining. Marina Clark is going to head to the pull-up bar to knock those out. Yeah, and a nice shot of the transition there coming in the middle part. The athlete in front making sure that she was in a stable position. And as soon as she's out of the way, kind of bumping it up on her shoulder to get to the spot that she wanted to be. They have about two-thirds of the worm that they're bearing there with a third on either side hanging off. Seems to be a pretty good strategy. They look really comfortable relative to some other positions we've seen. Leap and Lemurs are in lane five. They sit in third place right now. They are into their set of 15 worm thrusters. 
before heading back to the pull-up bar for 18 strict pull-ups. Reebok crew, they're more than halfway through that set of 15 worm thrusters. The three queens now with nine reps remaining on the worm. They sit in first place in this first of two heats. The Reebok crew on the right side of your screen as Allison Scuds heads to the pull-up bar. They are in second place in the heat. She even, it's probably going to do a, maybe a little descending rep scheme here, maybe a little 4 3 2, something like that. A pretty common strategy when it comes to strict gymnastics. Three queens are now done with their thrusters in. Oh, she hangs on for a set of four, actually. Nice. Kalela El Nagar is now going to the pull up bar. She had to make sure that her teammates were situated under that worm before she made her way to start this final set of strict pull-ups. And she's through five and taking a break. And the three queens looking to put up the top time here in this first heat. Two reps remain for them on the pull-ups. And now, once the team is back together underneath the worm, or back to the worm, that is when time will be called. So 10, 16, 0.58 seconds for the three queens as they dust the competition here in heat number one to set the top time heading into the second and final heat of day number four competition here at Tier Wadapalooza. And it's just that last athlete needs to get back to the worm and touch it basically. And that's what's going to signify the end of the workout. For the Reebok crew. Allison Scuds, Elisa Fuliano, and Michelle Baznet on their final set of nine worm thrusters. The Leap and Lemurs are on the right. They are almost done with their set of 18 strict pull-ups. Yeah, Fuliano making her way back there, and we've seen that kind of second key play out with Scuds and Fuliano taking a brunt of the work on the pull-up bar, which means Michelle Baznet has gotten really comfortable with that worm during these 11 or 12 minutes. Allison Scud <laughs> saying hello along with Michelle Baznet. You love to see that. I mean, obviously, weather is something that no one has control over, but athletes like that, veteran athletes especially, making the most of the situation and having some fun despite all the frustrations that could be there. When Fuliano's done. She gets back to the worm, and that will be time. For that team, 11.45.21 seconds is now. We have a little more than a minute to go before we hit the time cap as the Leap and Lemurs looking to be the next team to finish. They have four worm thrusters and then nine strict pull-ups that they need to complete Dixieland Delight. They are in their set of 18 pull-ups right now. So the Leap and Lemurs really the only team that has a chance to get across the finish line inside that 13-minute time cap here in heat number one. We saw this in the individual side. The strict pull-ups being thrown into the competition is something that, you know, hopefully all these athletes are practicing, but you don't often see it in competition setting anymore. And I think that it may be sending a message to some of these teams that, oh, maybe that is something we should practice more often. The Leap and Lemurs are just about done as Marissa Gonzalo is on the pull-up bar on the right side of your screen. Now 15 seconds to go and one rep left for Gonzalo and she's got to get back to the worm. And they are done. 12.49.62 unofficially for the Leap and Lemurs. Three teams in this opening heat finish all the work inside the 13 minute time cap. No one does it more quickly than the three queens. 10 minutes, 16 seconds. Yeah, I mean, 90 seconds better than the next team in the heat. Very impressive with both the worm and on the strict pull-ups for the three queens. One more look at the performance from three queens is they were out front early and managed to keep themselves there throughout the entirety of this event. You know, really hard to find anything that they didn't do well here. You see how smoothly they were moving through the worm thrusters with it maintaining that natural position pretty much the entire time. 
seemed to be a good balance of upper body pulling capacity between their three athletes. And like we said earlier, a 90 second advantage relative to the rest of the field. Extremely impressive performance in Heat 1 to close things out here for the three queens. Heat win for the three queens who came into this event in 20th place overall with 176 points. Their best finish came in Waterfall on the Bay, the last event that we had here when they took 13th overall. 10, 16.58 seconds. Three teams getting inside that 13 minute time cap. Reebok crew takes second, followed by the Leapin' Lemurs in third. Well, final heat for the women. Coming up next when we return to Tier Wadapalooza in Miami. SoCal Huntington Beach will be the setting for our second flagship event this September. Miami and SoCal, Tier Wadapalooza, by Coastal. Scan the QR code to learn more. We are down to the final heat for the elite women's team competition here at Tier Wadapalooza. Thanks for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Brian Friend and Lauren Khalil is out there at the Flagler stage. Event number six, because of weather, had to change it. It's Worm Fran. Yeah, always fun to end a competition with some version of Fran, something that most people who train in affiliates are used to. Here we've got uh, thrusters with the worm and strict pull-ups due to the weather. Got rid of the kipping gymnastics as we saw on the individual side. And a couple teams in Heat 1 handled that much better than the rest. Let's talk about the keys to worm Fran for the women. Yeah, we made a little change to our keys as well. Double trouble on the worm stays the same. Not only do you have to do the thrusters, but you have to have two athletes holding the worm to accumulate any pull-ups. However, you can split those any way you want, and if you have one or two strong pullers, they can do most, if not all, of the work. Here are your overall standings after five events, and it's RX Performance. They sit atop the overall leaderboard. They have a 20-point cushion on stronger than a 90s trend. Team Scandinavian, they currently occupy the third and final spot on the leaderboard as far as the podium is concerned, but Team Ice Barrel is only 11 points back of them for that final podium position. Yeah, and this change to the programming has the potential to throw everything up in the air. We saw the huge discrepancy from top to bottom in Heat 1, and I expect that just like on the individual side, we'll see something similar even in the top heat with the teams. Here are the lane assignments for the second and final heat. Your overall leaders, Team RX Performance, they will be working out of lane number 10. They've had a very solid competition, never finished finishing lower than 5th. And they have an event win in Worms Can't Swim. Plus Ultra, they are in lane number five. They sit in 11th overall. They're trying to crack the top 10 here and a popular pick to possibly win this event. <laughs> and uh, having some fun with their shoes. I don't think I've seen that before on a competition Florida CrossFit event. Well, the fans continue to like Ice Barrel. The Heat 1 crew likes Plus Ultra. Yeah, but possibility that all those picks were made prior to knowing these changes. And we're going to get a real quick insight in the first round, just like we did in heat number one, of maybe who has the best strict pull-ups amongst these teams. Second and final heat is underway. The time to beat belongs to the three queens. They were one of three teams to complete the entirety of the work in this event inside that 13-minute time cap. 10 minutes, 16 seconds. Lane 10, this is RX Performance. Your overall leaders coming in, Antonia Falk, Kudelinski, Maria Longfors, and Camilla Salmason-Hellman. 
spoke to them earlier today and they said, we love the worm and it helps that we're all the same height as you see there. Antonia Falkodolensky, as we talked about, having a vast array of team experience and spearheading the worm work once again, being in the front as she was during the clean and jerks yesterday. Down in lane 12, that is Team Ice Barrel. Looking to work their way onto the podium. Paige Powers, Brooke Wells, and Bailey Rail. 401 points, they need to make up 11 on Team Scandinavian in order to leapfrog them for third place. Yeah, we lane spoke. 13 is part of me, Brian, the Lycan gang, they are leading the way right now. And Lycan gang had that uh, great start to the competition yesterday. They are very good on the gymnastics historically, so don't be surprised if they stayed towards the front on this one. They're looking for a top five finish. They have 359 points, sixth place overall, only 13 points out of that fifth spot in the overall standings. And really, you know, obviously they're doing great here, but have to feel great about their performance overall, no matter what, after being outside the top 30 last year, to be inside the top five at this point is quite a jump in one year. 36 strict hands, pardon me, 36 strict pull-ups that they need to complete. It was Maria Quintero who was on the pull-up bar last time we checked for the Lycan gang. There's Plus Ultra shouldering that worm is Jesse Smith in the white top on the left side of your screen. Now passing out of view is on the pull-up for her team. Stronger than a 90s trend though. They are battling the Lycan gang for the top spot in this heat. Stronger than a 90s trend. In lane number 11, 440 points coming in. They got to make up 20 on RX performance in order to win this competition. Yeah, definitely have a couple of different battles going on there. And I'll be curious to see where Ice Barrel shakes out. They have been surging, but they had a little bit of difficulty with the worm yesterday. That is the Kolesnikov team in lane number four. The Lycan gang. Looking at now in lane 13, they continue to lead here in the opening portion of this event. The 36 strict pull-ups. After this, it's back to the worm for 21 thrusters. Stronger than a 90s trend on the right side of your screen. They have now started their second set of worm thrusters, and they have taken the lead from the Lycan gang. Lycan gang dumping the worm. And now they have to get themselves situated before they start their second of four sets on the worm. Yeah, stronger than a 90s trend has been excellent in the last three events over the first, a second, and a third. Nothing worse than a seventh for them. Very consistent, just slightly behind the RX performance, but moving very well with the worm, as we'd expect all three women having a uh, team experience. And right now, RX performance, they are not inside the top five. Stronger than a 90s trend. They need some help from some of these other teams if they want to wind up on top of the podium. Kelsey Keel out front and barking out the orders there, much like Paul Katalensky taking the burden of the front of the worm, as we know, can be so difficult and a great candidate to do it. Five times games experience on teams for Kelsey Keel. Plus Ultra is on the right. The team of Kyra Milligan, Jesse Smith, and Devin Kim is now stronger than a 90s trend, have knocked out their 21 worm thrusters back to the pull-up bar for 27 more strict pull-ups. Emily Lundberg there ripping out some a good set, but a really fast cycle rate. And that's what we switched our key to, stronger pullers pull. And if she could do this throughout the workout, man, they're going to be tough to beat. Stronger than the 90s trend, plus Ultra. And the Lycan gang have now fallen back into third place. The Fearless Misfits, they're inside the top five now. They're down in lane 16. These are your top two teams here in this final heat. Stronger than the 90s trend on the left side once again. Very much alive to win the entire competition here at Tier Wadapalooza. Yeah, Fearless Misfits best performance came on Uno Dos Trace last night, which had a high volume of gymnastics in it, so potentially one of their areas of expertise. Kelly Baker leaving the pull-up bar. She's got six reps left. They dropped the worm. They may be done now. And they are. And now 15 worm thrusters 
We're stronger than the 90s trend on the left side as they are leading the team on the right plus ultra. And this is one of those situations where if you are 90s trend, all you can do is go for the event win. They'll need some help to get this overall win, but so far they're doing everything that they can. Lane number 10. In the middle of your screen, they're currently in sixth place. That's RX Performance. They are your overall leaders coming in, and they only lead stronger than a 90s trend by 20 points. Well, sixth place earns you 80 points, so if things were to finish exactly that way, that would put them in a dead tie based on points. Approaching the halfway mark of this event. 13 minute time cap here. Stronger than the 90s trend. Doing all they can to try to put themselves on top of the overall standings and on top of the podium here at Tier Wadapalooza. As Emily Lundberg, now a no rep on one of those strict pull ups. They are on their set of 18. After this, nine more worm thrusters and nine final pull ups. Kelsey Keel just doing all she can to block out the pain right now. There's Plus Ultra. They sit in second place. They are on their set of 15 worm thrusters. So stronger than the 90s trend, starting to open up a pretty significant lead here in this portion of the event. They are back for their final set of nine worm thrusters. This is the final set. For stronger than the 90s trend once they get their pull-ups done. They're only halfway through that set of 18. And Kelly Baker is the woman who's back on the pull-up bar on the left side of your screen. She's got a pretty fast cycle right there as well. And similarly to the Reebok crew who had Michelle Baznet stay on the worm a majority of the time, Kelsey Keel doing that for 90s trend while Lundberg and Baker ripped through those pull-ups. Stronger than the 90s trend. They are now done with that set of 18, while Plus Ultra has just sent their first athlete to those strict pull-ups. Nine worm thrusters, nine strict pull-ups remaining for stronger than a 90s trend. The top time out of heat number one, three queens, 10 minutes, 12 seconds officially. Just in the interest of if there is a tie on points, as you mentioned, 90s Trend has a first, a second, and a third. RX Performance has a first, and a second, and a third. So it basically would come down to this event finish. Stronger than the 90s Trend having a little trouble with the worm there. They have that figured out. Now they're back to work. Jesse Smith on the right side of your screen is back for plus ultra as Devin Kim goes to the pull up bar. They have five reps remaining to finish up that set of 18. Now we have nine strict pull-ups remaining for stronger than a 90s trend. And Lundberg and Keel we don't know about, how that's comfortable, but it's working. Hey, it talks about different strategies for supporting the worm. That's a new one to me. And it's got to only be a couple inches off the ground there. It is dangerously close to hitting the floor here is Kelly Baker. And now it is, look like it is on the floor. They're going to stop Kelly Baker. She's done. That, she may have gotten that last rep done. It looks like they're going to give her credit for that ninth rep before the worm dropped. 904.91 seconds gives stronger than a 90s trend. Right now, the event win if that score stands. We have to keep our eyes on RX Performance because they trailed RX Performance by 20 points. It's stronger than a 90s trend. They're going to get some help, possibly from three queens with that time of 10 minutes, 12 seconds. And we're only about 40 away from that right now. A plus Ultra looks to be the next team to finish as they are more than halfway through that set of nine. Now RX is on the right of your screen in the white and the red. Plus Ultra is on the left looking to be the second team to finish up. Plus Ultras now finished. They will come in in possibly second. Well, they're going to miss it by two seconds, so that will be third. RX Performance right now is back in seventh place in the heat. 
So their overall lead is quickly disappearing. They have got to hurry up if they want to stay on top of the overall standings. Now Team Scandinavian is in, and that's going to help stronger than a 90s trend. And Team Scandinavian ending off Ice Barrel there, which means they should secure a podium spot. Now Team Barine is done. Lane 13, the Lycan gang, they're also just about finished. That's a nice finish to the competition for both Vereen and Lycan gang. They were fifth and sixth coming in. It looks like another top five or six finish for both of them here. The team from Butcher's Lab and AB CrossFit respectively having a great competition over the last two days. RX performance, they are in big trouble right now as the fearless misfits Paige Semenza comes on back. As her team still has three strict pull-ups to go. RX performance now, they are in 10th place in the heat. Now just trying to stay on the podium. His team Scandinavians already across. They trailed them by 48 points. That's mile high muscles in lane seven. As we now have one minute to go and RX performance is in danger of getting capped. And that's a no rep as they're having all kinds of problems with the worm. And it looks like that may have closed out the set of nine and now they have nine strict pull-ups remaining. Less than a minute to get through them but RX performance who came in in the overall lead it's looking like stronger than the 90s trend has a very good chance of leapfrogging them for that top spot here in the final event. 30 seconds to go before we hit the time cap. They had that 48 point lead over Scandinavian. Scandinavian had a really good finish here, so things could even tighten up between those two. The Mile High Muscles is across. That's going to take more points from RX Performance. And now they are done. They make it inside the time cap. 1248.44 seconds. Ninth place in the heat. But remember, the couple times, the other two times that finished in heat number one, they will factor in. And stronger than a 90s trend may have done enough and gotten the help they needed to be crowned your tier Wadapalooza team champions. But we'll have to wait till everything is figured out here. Yeah, if they, in fact, finished 11th for RX performance, that would be good enough for 60 points which likely means that they'd finish second behind 90s trend and ahead of Scandinavian. But a great look at the 90s trend here. I mean, they have, like we said, have been impressive coming off three consecutive top three finishes, including an event win. Emily Lundberg and Kelly Baker cycle speed on the strict pull-ups, phenomenal. Kelsey Keel bearing the burden of that worm on the thrusters and the holds in the front for the duration of this workout. Everyone contributing the way that they could with these late changes to the workout. And uh, get a shot of the last rep here. That was very close on that one. I think they had about a 45 second. They had a huge a minute, cushion on Plus anyway. Ultra. But more than a minute faster. It's stronger than a 90s trend. They will pick up an event win it's going to be their second of the day and the second of Tier Wadapalooza, and it very well may put them on top of the podium. RX performance is going to take ninth in the heat, but we still have to factor in those three times from heat number one. See when you guys are ready. And this could get this could get really interesting. People figuring out some math. We'll just send it down to the floor for now. Lauren Khalil is with Stronger Than a 90s Trend. And we are going to find out if they've done enough to have the overall top score. But first, I got to talk to you about that strategy for the worm at the end. Kelsey, you were hanging on to what looked like the majority of it. That is true teamwork. Was that the strategy going in? Yes. Uh, I didn't actually even go over for any pull-ups. So I the just keep me in the front of the worm and try to deal with majority of the weight so that my monster pullers could get it done. <laughs>
and the reps, the speed of your reps, did it change at all because of the wetness out here? Uh, a lot of adversity on the floor for sure. No, it was really frantic. Like we didn't really warm up. And then when we got in the corral, it was a different workout than what we thought it was changed to. So we just like, again, this whole weekend have had so much fun and we just looked at each other. We're like, regardless of the outcome, like we're just going to go out there and have fun for one last time this weekend. And, and we did that. So two event wins to close out the day. Which one was more fun, though? Yeah, this one, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It doesn't matter that there's rain out here. You guys had an incredible performance. Good luck. We'll find out the score very soon. Thank you. Go birds. <laughs> well, stronger than a 90s trend. Picking up the event win. They won that heat by more than a minute. And now the question is, did they do enough? We'll find out later on. Women are done. Men coming up next as they close out their competition here at Tier Wada Palooza. Worm Fran ahead for the elite men's teams here at Flagler. Final day of competition coming to a close here at 2024 Tier Wada Palooza. Thanks for staying with us, everybody. The men coming out for their final elite team event. I'm Sean Woodland with Tommy Marquez. And Brian Friends making his way out to the Flagler stage. The contingency plan because of weather has been enacted. The event is Worm Fran. The name has not changed, but what is in it has. And it really comes down to the work on the pull-up bar. We we're going to do so, a variation of pulling movements working our way up in complexity, but we scrapped that strict pull-ups for the sake of safety here. Let's talk about keys to success here now that the event has changed. Well, <laughs> double trouble, Sean. On the women's side, we saw some very creative ways <laughs> of holding that worm with just two athletes, so it could present some trouble. But strong pullers pull, I love this because, you know, if you're good at strict pull-ups, you're gonna have an opportunity to go for it, and that's really what this test comes down to. The floor is getting ready here for the men in heat number one.
After 12 years of celebrating fitness, the Tier 1 is heading west, going to SoCal. Huntington Beach will be the setting for our second flagship event this September. Miami and SoCal, Tier 1 is now bi-coastal. You can scan the QR code to learn more. The rain has wreaked havoc with the schedule today. And it has caused some fans to seek shelter, but some fans still out there at Flagler to take in this final event for the men. Here are the lane assignments for the first of two heats for the elite men's teams. In lane at number 10 is EFP. They come in in 16th place overall, 198 total points. The trio of Benjamin Sexton, Johnny Charles, and Alexander Majors. You know, maybe one of the lesser known teams here, we haven't talked about them much, but a pretty solid weekend so far. Three athletes that finished in the 30s, very close to each other on the leaderboard at the North America East semifinal. So a few athletes that got together at semifinals and are now thrown down here in Miami. Alexander Majors jumping up there to test the pull-up bar. Benjamin Sexton taking his turn. Johnny Charles was the first man out there for EFP. Just trying to warm up the body here, you know, as is usually the case with, with these events. You have your staging area, your warm-up area. There is some time in between. And with the temp and weathers outside, sometimes you just got to get the body warm, get a couple of reps in to get ready to go. That worm weighs 312 pounds. And if you watch the women's heats, the reps on the worm will stay the same, but the reps on the strict pull-ups, as you saw in the event description, have increased. Just making a little bit of adjustment for reps for the men's side versus the women, adding a few more strict pulling movements. It's typically the case, at least, for most variations here in competition. We are just about set to kick things off. Final event for the elite men's teams here at Tier Wadapalooza. Four great days of competition. Three, two, one, go! Heat one of two is underway. Kick it off with 27 worm thrusters with that 300. 12 pound worm, you've dealt with this implement before. This is not as easy as these guys make it look. For sure, and I, I'll be honest, I did the three person worm in a competition alongside Marston Sawyers and Heber Cannon, <laughs> AKA the Buttery Bros. And let's just say they hung, hung me out to dry a little bit as the tall guy. <laughs> but it, it's, if you haven't used this implement at home, it really is the ultimate team implement it was introduced way back in 2013 it was a wooden version it was wooden logs connected by a rope and evolved naturally into this variation rogue fitness doing some cool stuff with it and then now it's really become a hallmark of the team competition because it requires all team members to be moving in unison it requires communication and if things break down it is devastating to have no reps Krypton, Alex Smith onto the pull-up bar alongside the true coach train called. I think that was Miko Lilliord who was on the pull-up bar for his team. They're at the far end of the floor here. There's Alex Smith. And they're going to be a great example of strong pullers pull. Alex Smith, longtime gymnast, phenomenal. Anytime the pull-up bar is involved, he's probably going to do a brunt of the work relative to an athlete like Christoph Horvath, a little bit longer, a little bit larger athlete where upper body pulling isn't his strength compared to Alec. Austin Spencer's taking over for Krypton on the pull-up bar. They got to do 45 reps here. So 45 total strict pull-ups. Divide them up however you want. The person on the pull-up bar can only work when his other two teammates are holding that worm. People slipping out there a little bit underneath that pull-up bar. Still uh, pretty wet out there at Flagler. We had a lot of rain, especially late in the day here at Bayfront Park. It's not just the pull-up bar, that worm is wet as well, particularly with a dynamic movement like the thrusters. Just one more thing in the back of your mind you have to account for. It's Christoph Horvath under the pull-ups as Krypton is just a few reps away from closing out their initial set of 45. They'll move back to the worm 
and complete 21 more thrusters. Now Krypton in the lead, coming in in 21st place overall. Their best finish was a 13th in uno, dos, tres. And I like how they arranged their order here. Kristoff only went to the bar to finish off the final set. So you know when he's done, he's going to have a significant break between between when he has to get back up on the pull-up bar again. So a nice job of picking your order to help mitigate your weaknesses and lean into your strengths as a team. Alex Smith, Austin Spencer, and Kristoff Horvath moving very well with that 312-pound worm chipping away at their set of 21. A true coach train colt right next to them now on the left side of your screen they sit in second place at rehab to perform they're ahead of dsm for third now alex smith will extricate himself from underneath that worm and move to the pull-up bar and now 36 total reps that they need to complete True coach train colt on the left side of your screen. Getting themselves situated with the worm as Alex Smith is knocking out his reps of the strict pull-ups and he will return to the worm. Alex going to set a seven and five. There goes Austin Spencer. Doing one third exactly of the work. We'll have to see if they decide to split it up evenly on this round. That's team overtake in the all black in lane six. Team Evolve, meanwhile, has moved up into a battle for second place. They're in lane number nine, Nicholas Heck, Brandon Luckett, and Joe Munno. Christoph Horvath back to the pull-up bar as he looks to close out his team's set of 36 strict pull-ups. Approaching the five-minute mark, 13-minute time cap here. First of two heats in the final event for the elite men's teams here at Tier Wadapalooza. Christoph moving really, really well. Basically eliminating all the excuses for us tall guys on strict pull-ups. Horvath back to the worm. And Krypton will move forward. And now it's 15 reps of Worm Thrusters. See on your right side, this is where it starts to get a little squirrely, trying to make sure you're in a good position. You're seeing a couple different versions of this. You see athletes turning to where their shoulders run parallel to the Worm, so it sits across the shoulders more like a back squat versus just focusing on one side. That's lane 15, rehab to perform. Nicholas Bibich, who is on the pull-up bar for his team, in the all-black. Krypton dusted those 15 reps of the Worm Thrusters, and Alex Smith will start on the set of 27 strict pull-ups. Approaching the halfway point of the event, So rehab to perform. They have things sorted on the worm. Felix Antoine LeMay in front. Alex Smith is back to the worm and they keep the same order on the pull-ups as Austin Spencer. You're seeing some other teams choose to choke up a little bit and favor one half of the worm. Krypton's not doing that. They're letting it sag a little bit in the middle, but when the athlete from the pull bar does come back, he's able to slot in and pick up that middle section and move a little bit quicker as a team versus the other teams. They have to kind of wiggle underneath the worm a little bit. Makes it a little awkward and it's a tough transition. The right side of your screen in the middle, that's team evolved. Nicholas Heck, Brandon Luckett, and Joe Munno.
rehab to perform has advanced the worm. Here, Mike Richards, one of our floor announcers, calling out the reps. They just have a couple left, does Krypton. Alex Smith flashing a little smile for the camera. So Nicholas Heck and Brandon Luckett supporting the worm for Team Evolve as Joe Munno works his way through those strict pull-ups. Now approaching the eight-minute mark, there is Team Evolve. Munno back on the pull-up bar for that team. Krypton looking to set the early time to beat. They have nine worm thrusters and 18 strict pull-ups remaining. And those are done. And once again, leading things off on the pull-up bar is Alex Smith. There's just nine reps here. Smith may do these all on his own. Make that 18 pull-ups, pardon me. Thank you, Tommy. Pointing that out. It was nine for the women, 18 for the men. Smith is back, and there goes Austin Spencer. The lane eight on the bottom of your screen, that's Belich Train Cult. They currently sit in third place behind Team Evolve in the upper right-hand part of your screen. And now Brandon Luckett is off the pull-up bar for his team, and he'll join Hecton Munno back on the worm. Austin Spencer starting to mix his grip a little bit, just trying to change up the pulling angle, incorporate some different muscle groups. 18 total pull-ups they need to complete to close out this event. Anyone who's done strict pull-ups in a workout knows exactly where Austin is, going down to singles, trying to do those quick cycle singles just to make up time. And it pays off. About nine minutes, 41 seconds for Krypton, setting the early mark to beat here with one heat remaining. There's Team Evolve, Brandon Luckett in front of that worm. And if the women's division is any indication, a couple of these teams could end up playing into the overall standings once the second heat comes out. Well, Joe Munno left early, had one rep remaining, and now he's back, and Team Evolve is in. About 10 28. So we'll call it 9 39 now for Krypton. Update on their time. Nearly 11 minutes gone by, 13 minute time cap here. Kenise is black, he just saw in lane number five. Right. Minute 45 left before we hit the time cap is Jonathan Ellingson on the right side. Now out of view for Kenise's black was hanging on to that thing. That's DSM Performance TCC. Ninety seconds ago, before we hit the time cap, that's the Midwest Cowboys in lane 14. As Matt Pratt's back on the pull-up bar for his team, DJ Kessler and Briley Smith on the worm. Now one minute to go. DSM Performance TCC trying to close out their set of 18 strict pull-ups to finish up their competition here. Had a chance to catch, with them, catch up with them after the sandbag send earlier this morning. They were just beaming with the energy here at Tier Wadapalooza. It was one of their first opportunities to compete on a big stage as a team. And 
that's a that's one to write home about for sure. Lane 11 is the Fox Fair at Manatee, man. That's Daniel Coots on the pull-up bar. And they are now done. Shoot, opting for a more understated outfit this time on the floor. 1238.67 seconds for the Fox Fair at Manatee, man. And now we have 10 seconds to go before we hit the 13-minute time gap. That's lane eight. That's the Leeds train call that you just saw. Midwest Cowboys dumping the worm. They are done. But it's Krypton with the time to beat 939 with one heat remaining. And no shock that a team with Alex Smith on it does well with the gymnastics movement. And it, and it wasn't just Alex. It was a pretty solid team effort all around. You see Christoph Horvath ripping through those strict pull-ups and for a team with varying heights sometimes that can be tricky with the worm but with a three-person worm it's a little bit shorter so you can account for that a little bit easier it helps that Kristoff is such a strong squatter Austin Spencer the individual games athlete in his own right a trio of high-level athletes they pretty much led from the first set of strict pull-ups and even though the last few were a struggle Spencer having to Switch up his grip. It's a nice way to wrap up the weekend for Krypton. Nine minutes, 39 seconds for Krypton. Only team to go sub 10. Just one of three teams to finish inside the 13-minute time cap. Team Evolve and the Fox Ferret Manatee Men. The other two final heat of Tijuana Palooza coming up next. It is the final heat of the final day of competition here as we close out four awesome days of fitness at Pier Wadapalooza here at Bayfront Park in Miami, Florida. Thanks so much for sticking with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Tommy Marquez. Brian Front is out there at Flagler. We got a tight race on top of the men's leaderboard. Team GoWad with a 12-point cushion on Team Pixel. The Ombre Hombres are trying to hang on to third place. Team Tier is only 16 back of them. And the Hombres, they're only 16 back of GoWad for the championship. Worm Fran, the name has stayed the same, but once again, weather has an effect on the competition, so we've had to change what this event looks like. Well, 27, 21, 15, 9 was a rep scheme that was introduced way back in 19.5 in the open to beef up the classic thruster pull-up combo. But for these teams, we had to switch to strict pull-ups in order to make it safer given the rain. Keys to Worm Fran. Double trouble. We've seen some teams have to figure out some creative ways because two athletes are going to be carrying the worm while one works on the pull-up bar. And then strong pullers pull. Earlier heat, Krypton really leaned on their athlete, Alex Smith, to do a lion's share of that early set of trick pull-ups. Here are the lane assignments for the second and final heat, and the teams fighting for the overall win here will all be right next to each other in the middle of the floor out there at Flagler. Team Goad, they come in as your overall leaders. 472 points are only 12 points up on Team Pixel. And we are underway. And Go Nine minutes, 39 seconds, the time to beat from Krypton. And Goad has to finish third or better to secure the win because if Pixel does win the event, it will give them the tiebreaker in the event of a tie. There is Team Goad. 
the trio of Justin Medeiros, Willie George, and Jay Crouch. A team pixel right next to them, the team that is trying to knock them off the top spot in the leaderboard, Roman Krennikov, Saxon, Panjic, and Jorge Fernandez. And Jorge Fernandez has plenty of experience with the worm. No doubt, part of the reigning Affiliate Cup champions in Invictus, but this team can't sleep either. They can't just look forward. They gotta know who's behind it because four points back of Team Pixel is the Ombre Ombres who have been on a roll. Two wins in the last three events. And Chandler Smith is the first man to the pull-up bar to start his set of 45 strict pull-ups. The Ombre Ombres, third place overall, 456 points, only 16 back of Gowad for the lead. And now Willie George is onto the pull-up bar for his team. Willie and Jay Crouch and Justin Bajeris just need to stay close to the two teams right behind them in the overall standing. There's and this is a great matchup because Willie George, typically tremendous upper body puller. And then you look at Chandler Smith going out early for the Ombre Ombres, the fan pick. Member of the U former member of the United States military at West Point. You think he's done some strict pull-ups <laughs> in his day? There's Bjorgen Carl Gubinson for Trace Leches, the Heat one pick. Fans like Noah Olson and company. There's Jason Hopper for Team Tier. They have a shot at the podium. They're only 16 points back of the Hombres for that third and final spot. Tight point spreads all around. You can't afford to have any major mistakes here. Pilum Rocanio to the pull-up bar for the Hombre Hombres. James Sprague on the left side for the strapping young lads. They sit in fifth place overall, 369 points. They would have to win this and then just have everyone else have an absolute disaster in order to find themselves on the podium. Very similar to Jorge Fernandez. Tola Maracanio, quite familiar moving that worm implement as he has finished on the podium at the CrossFit Games on the team as well. Now the Ombre's left side of your screen under their set of 21 worm thrusters. After this, it's 36 strict pull-ups. Team Gowad in the middle. They have fallen behind here as Team Pixel, the team on the right side of your screen, Roman Krennikov in the all-black in front of the worm there. They moved into second place. Now Gowad is fighting with Team Tier for third. Well, the Ombres have about a three rep lead right now on Pixel. And thanks to back to back event wins in Uno Dos Trace and the Sandbag Sand, the Ombres really just have to beat Pixel and they will overtake them on the leaderboard via the tiebreaker because they're only four points back. So that's one place in this workout. Moraccio is on to the second set of strict pull ups, 36 that they need to accumulate here. Is it just me or did Noah, Noah really got a haircut between the, fir may the first event well, I wouldn't put it and the second? It. Got the, the spot barbershop out there. Well, as you mentioned, the Ombres have been on a roll. They've won two of the last three events. And they took fifth in Waterfall on the Bay. They haven't finished lower than fifth this entire competition. Four minutes gone by, 13-minute time cap here, and it's Krypton from heat number one once again with the top time, nine minutes, 39 seconds. Only three teams in heat number one were able to finish this event inside the 13-minute time cap. Now Chandler Smith back to the worm, and Noah Olsen will head to the pull-up bar. They have 14 reps remaining to the hombres. Team Pixel. Courtesy of the effort from Roman Krennikov on the right side of your screen in the all black. They have now moved into the lead ahead of the Ombres by a couple of reps as Jason Hopper for Team Tier retreats back to the worm. Looks like Dallin Pepper is going to take over for him. Here comes Roman Krennikov as Team Pixel is now done with their second of four sets of strict pull ups. Back to the worm now for 15 thrusters. Interesting, they decided to set the worm down, but the Ombres decided to just power right through it, able to pull ahead by just a few reps. So despite the effort from Roman Krennikov in those strict pull-ups, it really didn't change their placement coming into this next round because the Ombres were already a few reps heading into it. 
Hombres and Pixel trading the lead here. Pixel was able to gain ground on the pull-up bar, but back on the worm, the Hombres are now dead even with them. The team Tier and Team Gowat continue to swap third place. And now Saxon Panchik for Team Pixel is going to kick off the 27 strict pull-ups. Noah Olson is back for the Hombres. Saxon did seven there. Saxon is back. Jorge Fernandez will go back to the pull-up bar. Noah starting to hit a little bit of a wall here. Willie George on the left side of the box, on the right side of your screen for Gowad. Just got a no rep, but they are in the top three right now. They are your overall leaders. This is Gowad, 472 points, have a 12-point cushion on Team Pixel. Right now, the battle is for second place overall between the Hombres and Pixel. Only four points separating the two of them with Pixel coming in in second place overall. Noah took some big breaks there when he was reduced to singles, really flirting with the red line there. Opened up the door for a few other teams to pass them. There's Justin Medeiros, former two-time fittest man on earth. Back to the worm for Gowad. Now Jay Crouch will try to close out this set of 27. This is a good spot for Gowad. They don't have to win, but if as long as Pixel doesn't win, but it's, it's going to be close. They just need to finish third or better. But Pixel's your leaders. They're through now six of these final nine worm thrusters. After this, it's a final set of 18 strict pull-ups, and there goes Saxon Panchik. A team tiers moved into second. They're on their final set of worm thrusters, and the Hombres have now two reps remaining. But this one is going to be close. No rep for Saxon Panchik. The Team Pixel is a third of the way through here. Team Tier now in second. The Ombres moving back into third ahead of Gowad. A Pixel's only got to make up 12 points on Gowad. And right now they are well ahead of Krypton's pace of 9.39. That's the top time. Chandler Smith staying out for a big set. Ombre's moving up as Chandler Smith goes back in that red shirt, right side of your screen, and now Noah Olson back to the pull-up bar. Pixel's got five reps remaining, as does Team Tier. Look out for them. And Pixel is done. They've got to get back to the worm. And they're in an A25. Gowad's going to take second. The Ombres are in. And that means it looks like Gowad did enough to hang on for the overall win. A ton of jostling in those final few reps. A few teams deciding to make an extra rotation as their athletes hit the wall. Gowad went from fourth up to second. And with Pixel winning the event, that should be enough for them to hold on. A tremendous push there at the end from the Gowatz crew, but. Past the nine minute mark and the top teams are already in. A complex Wadex in the black shirts, they're done. 923.71 seconds. That's gonna be fifth in the event for them. They had a great weekend. That was an awesome performance from them. Se they had a second place. Well, Worms can't swim another top 10 finish coming into the day. They're eighth at Waterfall in the Bay. There's Trace Leches, Travis Mayer for his team. As Conquer Athlete. They are now across. Inside three minutes to go here. There goes Pat Velder to the pull-up bar.
Those are what your strict pull-ups are supposed to look like, kids. <laughs> Let Uncle Pat show you how it's done. <laughs> oh, Uncle Pat can <laughs> throw down a pull-up or two. Now, if you're over Carl Gumanson, I'm sure these will look good as well. Mayhem the Empire, they just came across. And Trace Leches is done. That's Team Gorilla 9-1-1 in lane number five. The Bino brothers. It's Jason Uda who is going back to the pull-up bar. The strapping young lads, they're just about done as James Sprague closes things out. Less than two to go. And then we will crown some champions. At least for now, it's looking like despite all that chaos there towards the end, we could have the very same top three that we did coming in. Top three coming in, Gowad, they were on top of the overall standings. They had a 12-point cushion on Team Pixel, and then the Ombre Hombres, they sat in third place with 456 points. And it's likely, as you said, Tommy, we're not going to see a change in that order. We might have some crazy eights with eight points being the separator between all three teams on the podium. It's just some back of the napkin math, Sean. Be careful of that. He's in trouble. One minute to go now. In the final heat here at Tier Wada Palooza. Team Gorilla 911, they are in. And with that, every team getting across the finish line in that second heat inside the 13 minute time cap well pixel is going to get the event win unofficially and it looks like team gowad did enough to hang on to the top spot in the overall standings 825.26 seconds for pixel to pick up the win in 100 points Gowad right behind them at 8.33, and the home is coming in six seconds after that. The top four teams overall coming into this event are the top four finishers, just slightly adjusted order. Just a testament to the, the talent and depth of this men's team field. And a nice mixture of individual games athletes and podium finishers in the team competition. Coming in, we said Gowad had to finish third or better to clinch the win. They take second. Of course, these scores are unofficial, pending any reviews. The Pixel, with the event win, it's their second of the competition. They only finished lower than third once, and that was sixth in the sandbag send. And even though we still don't know the standings, they put up a good fight, unlike my Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> Still hurts. But I'm glad you're coping already. <laughs> and with that, the 2024 version of Tier Wadapalooza comes to a close. There were a lot of curveballs thrown throughout this competition, but Got to give kudos to everybody involved in organizing this thing to being able to roll with the punches and get this competition over the finish line. Let's send it down to Brian Friend, who is with Team Gowad. Thanks, Sean. Justin, first time back on the competition floor in a while. How's it feel to get those competition legs and juices flowing again? Oh, for sure. I mean, not the off season that I've normally had. Didn't compete at Rogue, but definitely want to step back out there and, like, Nothing better is to throw down with the guys. So it was awesome to get back out there and obviously have a good showing. I mean, nothing better. I don't think anybody had us kind of winning this thing. So uh, feel good about it. <laughs> Maybe not nobody. Willie, retired from individual competition, but man, you still got it. Yes, uh, honestly, it was really tough for me, but I had a really nice moment with these two beasts. Honestly, honestly trust me, they are fucking fit. So it was like every time another workout in the workout to try to follow them. And I'm really happy to, to, to do to this competition with them and uh, really grateful. 
Jay, you were on the team that was second here last year, team of three that won down under championship. Great showing again here. Are you the best team of three male in the world right now, athlete? Dude, I suppose we could argue that for sure, but um, no, like it's uh, always an awesome opportunity to come over here working with GoWad. They put the team together and got us boys uh, together, so um, yeah, super grateful to them and uh, to these boys, of course. I made the weekend fun and uh, we had good game plans and we executed them every single time. Just so did all the strategy and trust me, sometimes we, we have to tell him, oh, slow down, Justin. We can't follow you. <laughs> but no, awesome weekend and um, yeah, thanks everyone for coming out. It was sick. We'll let the scoring team do their job, but great performance. Thanks for showing up and throwing down. Team Gowad second place in that event, and looks like it will be enough to keep them on top of the overall standings. We'll take a break. When we return, we will crown the team champions here at Tier Palooza. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. It means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. I'm obsessed with squeezing a little bit more out of me. obsessed with taking really good care of me. I'm obsessed with wanting to be the best. There are a lot of potential paths to greatness. It starts with the hard work. A relentless commitment to self-awareness. An obsession with forward progress. Anyone has what it takes to be the best. Only the best. Obsess.
stretch, squat, stroke, stride, swing, spin. That's movement, and this is you. And because you were made to move, we want to move with you. Whether you compete for a living or train for life, we've developed a cutting-edge movement experience that's unlike anything else. Because we, like you, are constantly evolving. Our reconstructed platform features daily mobility paths that can be tailored to fit your lifestyle and athletic goals at a time, space, and pace that works for you. We'll build your foundation in here so you can perform out there, work harder, perform longer, and recover faster. Pliability. What's your path? Back here at Bayfront Park in Miami, Florida. The competition is over at Tier Wadapalooza, but we have yet to crown our team champions. Before we do that, here's our Diamatize better every moment, moment of the day. And it was earlier today at Tina Hills in that great race we saw on the men's side in Sandbank Sand. I was on the floor for this just off camera and the crowd was into it. You could see the athletes make that realization that Hey, this is one of those moments where we're in a matchstick race with some of the best in the sport, and it was awesome. And it was the Ombre Ombres who ended up winning that event, and that may have helped them wind up on the podium. Still awaiting the official results and the official announcement of our podium finishers here for the elite team competition for both the men and the women made that moment even better talking to a few of the, the teams afterwards there was a lot of chirping going on between teammates in between that giving pointers on sandbag performance and it was just awesome to see after 12 years of celebrating fitness the tier Palooza is heading west to socal huntington beach will be the second setting for our other flagship event this september Miami and SoCal. Tier Wadapalooza is by coastal You can scan the QR code to learn more. Still a good contingency of fans out there at Flagler, despite the rough weather that we had, especially later in the day here. It looked like things might be okay uh, when we kicked things off at Tina Hills, but then right as we got set, to start waterfalls on the bay this fifth event of the competition the second today that's when the sky opened up and problems ensued <laughs> well it's still a testament to this community and the the fans that waited amidst the inclement weather to still come out and support these athletes rain or shine and this is one of those competitions that What's really cool about it, too, is if you come here and you walk around Bayfront Park, you see the athletes just mingling with the fans. You know, no they're doubt. out there, you know, bump into people all the time uh, who are out there competing in the elite divisions. Roman Krennikov signing some autographs. And I think you've had the best comparison for this to maybe another sport. It's like NBA All-Star Weekend kind of. No doubt. The best of the best are here. But the stakes are just a little bit different. They still want to compete and have a good time. But it's an opportunity to have some of those stress and anxiety barriers, barriers lowered in the midst of competition, and athletes are the benefactor of that. The score is still being reviewed, selfie still being taken. We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we will have the announcement of our team elite champions. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. 
means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. I'm obsessed with squeezing a little bit more out of me. I'm obsessed with taking really good care of me. I'm obsessed with wanting to be the best. There are a lot of potential paths to greatness. It starts with the hard work. A relentless commitment to self-awareness. An obsession with forward progress. Anyone has what it takes to be the best. Only the best. Obsess. It's okay to want to be strong. It's okay to want to have it all. Recover faster, go further. Dimatize ISO 100. Because settling is unsettling. Stretch, squat, stroke, stride, swing, spin. That's movement, and this is you. And because you were made to move, we want to move with you. Whether you compete for a living or train for life, we've developed a cutting-edge movement experience that's unlike anything else. Because we, like you, are constantly evolving. Our reconstructed platform features daily mobility paths that can be tailored to fit your lifestyle and athletic goals at a time, space, and pace that works for you. We'll build your foundation in here so you can perform out there, work harder, perform longer, and recover faster. Pliability. What's your path?
we are ready to announce the six teams that will stand on the podium here for the elite team competition for the official announcement. Let's send it down to the floor at Flagler. All right. This is not our podium ceremony, but these are our top three men and women's champs for your elite division. Men up first in third place. Ombre Ombres. In second place after that final event. Team Pixel. And in first place, your 2024 Tier Wadapalooza Elite Team Men's Division Champs, Team GoWad. Team Gowad, your men's elite division champions, and it was an eight point difference between them and Team Pixel. Noah Olson's team, the Ombres, they wind up in third place by 20 points over Team Tier in fourth. And Trace Leches, in very Pat Vellner like fashion, worked their way up the overall standings and finished in fifth. Well, they did have BKG on their team, so it was a bit of a sneaky top five finish for them. Team Goa, Justin Medeiros, Julie George, and Jay Crouch taking home the championship. And Justin Medeiros hoping that this is the first championship that he can claim here in 2024. Looking to get back into form at the games this year for winning two straight championships. Having an off year in 2023. Hoping that this can give him momentum heading into the game season. Let's go back down to the floor for the announcement of the women's podium finishers. All right, our men were a little bit overzealous on the podium. We're just gonna announce our women's champ. Your 2024 Tier Wadapalooza Team Elite Women's Division Champs. Stronger than a 90s trend. All right, give us five. Stronger more than a 90s trend at 540. Right now, this is unofficial. We know they won. I'm just trying to finalize the two teams that join them on the podium. RX Performance. Team Scandinavian right now in second and third place. And a tremendous way to close the competition for stronger than a 90s trend. After a pair of seventh place finishes to start this team competition, they go third, first, second, first to close it out. Really picking up steam to finish this weekend and a great performance from Kelsey Keel, Kelly Baker, Emily Lundberg. And with that, another year at Wadapalooza comes to a close. It's the first of two this year because remember, after 12 years of celebrating fitness, the tier Wadapalooza is heading to SoCal. Huntington Beach will be the setting for our second flagship event this September. Miami and SoCal, Tier Wadapalooza, now by coastal You can scan the QR code on your screen to learn more. Thanks so much for spending the weekend here with us in Miami, everybody. Hope you had a great time. For Brian Friend, Lauren Khalil, Tommy Marquez, and our entire hardworking crew here at Bayfront Park in South Florida, I'm Sean Woodland. We'll see you in September in SoCal.